What's happening, weirdos? This is the incredible Todd Berry. I've been such a fan of Todd's for, well, two decades? He's incredible. He's one of, one of the original greats, and I'm so glad that we finally made this podcast happen. He's a delight, and we've been uh, trying to make it uh, sync up for years, and we're finally here, and it did not disappoint. I'm so glad you guys are here to enjoy. His new special, Domestic Short Hair, is hilarious. And it's available right now on YouTube. You can also go to toddberry.com for his tour dates and such. Speaking of which, I'm also on tour. Thank you to everybody who just came out to Madison. It was uh, amazing. All five shows were so fun. And we can't wait to go to Pittsburgh. Next, Pittsburgh and then Buffalo, Milwaukee, and then Denver. And we'll be adding some dates on PeteHolmes.com very soon. I think Minneapolis is going to be announced very soon as well. All of those will be available on PeteHolmes.com as well as uh, Largo-LA.com for my monthly show here in LA. It's so easy. I'm just going to the website right now. The next one is Friday, August 16th. These shows are always incredible. So if you're in the LA area, come to Largo, come on Friday, August 16th and laugh with us. Laugh with me and Val's always there. It's always such a fun time. Hope you can be there. In the meantime, enjoy this wonderful chat with the incredible Todd Berry. Get into it. I was going to say up top, I think it's funny and worth noting that you noticed that I was a little tired. Yeah. And you said, are you tired? Yeah. And I had a flare up of pride. Yeah, you got a little, you got a little hurt by that one. <laughs> a real simple off. <laughs> hey, that thing that everyone feels, I feel like you have it right now. Uh, but I was like, no. Yeah. I think maybe because I was marrying it with my hosting you oh like, no like yeah. i'm inviting you on and no, i don't want to be like right. yeah i'm tired <laughs> like i'm I'm kind of bored did you want to do this <laughs> <laughs> like if you were doing conan or something and he just seemed like although i've done you've done conan and all this just so many times you had to have been on when the host just kind of seemed a little off um off meaning human off meaning drained that's actually once i was on letterman and this is kind of funny relates i Semi did panel. I kind of sat with him, and I'd like between commercials. I think they just sat me down, and, and he's like, "How's it going?" He turns to me, he goes, "How's it going? Oh, good. How are you doing?" He goes, "I'm tired. I've been doing two shows. I did two shows today." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. Was, you know, was, thanks for unloading on me, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was going to be worse. No, no, no. no. It was just. It's funny that we have a gentler Letterman now. Now that's the new Letterman. I kind of thought he would go underground. Instead, now I like see him every day. I see some clip of him when I hear the the Paul Simon song, uh, "Lives the Former Talk Show Host." You know that? Yeah, yeah. I always think of Letterman living out in like the deserts of New yeah, Mexico. Yeah, I mean, I think he has a place in Montana. Like, I don't know what that guy does. Like, I always fantasize. Well, have you seen that clip of me when I was on when I was eighteen? What? Oh, it's it's on YouTube. There's a clip. In what capacity? I wrote a letter to viewer mail. And asked him to call me, and he did. On called me on the air. Just pre, you didn't do comedy until no, way later. I was, just, I, was an, a eight, I was eighteen, living in Florida. Um, if you want to crack it on, you feel free. But from someone named Todd Raz, I'm guessing that's just a nickname. His last name is Barry from Tamarack, Florida. Here's the situation. I do an unbelievable impression of Paul Schaefer. Here are the options: A, fly me to New York. Pay for everything, and I'll do the impression on your show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or call me, and I'll do it over the phone. So go ahead, Dave. Pick either A or B. Either way, I'm sure it will turn out to be a real nifty gig. Uh, gee, it was a tough choice, Todd, but I've selected option B. Let's call this... Uh... We're calling somewhere in Florida. The 305 uh, area code. I hope I'm dialing correctly. And this man, Paul, is going to do an impression of you. Has anyone ever done this? No, this is going to be a first. Yeah. Okay, Todd Berry, apparently a man with a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> Doing soon an impression of our own musical director, Mr. Paul Schaefer. We're waiting for that first... Hello? Well, hello, Todd. How are you? Uh, is this Todd? Yes, Todd. Uh, my name is David Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Where are you now, Todd? I'm in Florida. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello? Sounds just like Paul, doesn't it? Uh, what, what particular city, Todd? Um, it's Tamarack. Tamarack, and is it near a larger community? It's near Fort Lauderdale. 
Oh, well, that gives us generally an idea. It's a nice area of the country there. Uh, I noticed, Todd, the phone didn't ring, and you just picked it up. Did it ring there? Yeah, that's the way that thing works. <laughs> Gee, uh, uh, Todd, I'd love to go on talking with you, but I understand you do an impression of Mr. Paul Schaefer. Oh, uh, it's unreal, Dave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Dave, yeah, what? Dave, it's unreal, Dave. I mean, it, it's cuckoo groovy, Dave. I mean, I'm peeking right now, Dave. That's... I mean, is it, is it not in here or is it just me, Dave? Back to you, Dave. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice, Todd, thank you. We'll, we'll intersplice it. I mean, I've talked about it on a lot of podcasts. What did you say? I wrote to him, and I, it was, you know, the viewer mail segment that they used to have? Yeah. And this was when it was pre-email, so you'd actually write a letter. You'd get out <laughs> With a pen. pen, yeah. And Sometimes paper. you'd have to swap pens <laughs> mid-letter. A, yeah, get a Change his colors. <laughs> get a stamp. Um, <laughs> all that a shit. A lick stamp, by the way, not a <laughs> yeah, peel no, those, stamp. Not the advanced stamps not that we have today. <laughs> or the, and way before the forever stamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No forever stamps. These were monetary. This yeah, was currency. This is when they were confident that you needed stamps. Oh, they were <laughs> cocky. But they. Um, I wrote them a letter and I said, I kind of... Just said I do a Paul Schaefer impression, uh-huh. which I didn't really do. But I said you can. Uh, you have two options: fly me to New York, pay for everything, and I'll do it on the air. You said that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> or call me, and I'll do it over the phone. That's very you. It was surprisingly because even when I talk to him, if you hear the call, I'm surprisingly. You know, I made one pretty good joke and zinged him, and no, yeah, what was and the it, joke? Like, do you well, remember I mean, the it, area? It, yeah, I do remember. He, he, for some reason, didn't hear the ring. He goes, hey, Todd, I noticed the phone didn't ring over there. Did it ring over on your side? And I go, yeah, that's, that's the way that thing works. <laughs> that's the way that thing works. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty, but it was a pretty cool thing to do. And then to, the fact that I ended up doing his show. So well, did you tell him when you came I, For some reason, I didn't. And then I tried to, I don't know, I didn't. I didn't I don't push know. that I'm up. I'm kind of glad you didn't. I feel like there's only disappointment down that hallway. Yeah. You like, I did uh, Fallon before it was The Tonight Show, uh-huh. and Green Day was there. And I went backstage to talk to Green Day. Yeah. And it's not exactly the same, but I said to Billy Joe, I go, hey, I saw you at the Hat Shell in Boston, which was kind of a famous show where there was a riot. Yeah. They only played three songs, and the concert ended because right. it was too rowdy. I was there. Uh huh. What's he going to say? I'm not saying he blew it or blew me off, but like he's just like, oh yeah. I always wonder I'm about like, that. Ah, when, when I shouldn't yeah. have said it. Well, it's no shouldn't have. It's like I, I agree. I'm glad I met them, and you know what? I just saw the bassist out, and I almost said the same thing. <laughs> so I haven't learned my lesson. Although I didn't, so I have learned my lesson. I was, I was once like, on an elevator with Flea in a hotel in New York, <laughs> and. And I don't know why I did this because normally I just, just kind of nod if I make eye contact, but I don't. And I just said, "Flee," and he's like, "That's me." I was like, "What the fuck did I just do?" You were the guy. <laughs> why did I say his name out loud? I mean, I know that's way down on his list of annoying people he meets every yes, day, but yes, it's just yeah. You know, flee. It's, 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 I guess I was just thinking out loud, but it, he's like, "That's me," and like it's a real small elevator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. But that's I'm, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Also, and I'm, this isn't like a run of the mill flea riff. Like this guy is named Flea. I'm just saying, once you're like a fun name, yeah, yeah. people get yelling say, it out happens right. more. But that, to go Seal to, gets it. No end. <laughs> <laughs> Seal. Probably. No, there's no way. If I was in an elevator with Seal, I'm saying Seal. Seal. I, yeah. You don't. Yeah, Bono we, is the exception. I always wonder. Like, it's less I want, fun to yell. I once saw um, Kevin O'Leary. Do you watch Shark Tank? Yeah. The guy's Mr. Wonderful. I saw him at, at LaGuardia, and I just was like, man, I wonder if just be, people just come up. To, I must come up to him and just go, you're Mr. Wonderful. And like, yeah. Or also, like, I always feel sad for that guy, Emily, Emily em, what's it, Lagasse. On the, the show? The guy, no, he's the oh. chef who says oh, bam. bam. And like, imagine just walking bam. through the street, just bam. bam. That's, uh, we just talked about this. Robin Williams transcended the mork. Like, that's yeah, big. Yeah. Like, yeah, imagine that's... being Nanu Nanu. There's four <laughs> channels. Right. You're on one of them. Everyone's watching right. Mork and Minnie, and you're fucking mork. Right. How mm-hmm. do you do that? <laughs> I did, he, Mork and Minnie is like not on the list of things I think about when I think about Robin Williams. Right, that's, that's true. That's incredible. Yeah. I just heard Bill Burr make that point. It's like nobody does that. Uh, Chuck Berry does the twist. Year later, he does Let's Twist Again. 
It's the same song. Because <laughs> they got nothing. Right. Fucking did. Robin Williams did Mork and then went on and did all these other incredible things. I mean, I wouldn't say Chuck Berry has nothing. I mean, I know. He kind of did invent rock and roll music. Was that Chuck Berry that did Twist? I think he's one of the... Or oh, uh, is it? Oh, Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm glad we circled that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, but to to your Green Day story, I think yeah, I wonder about that too because there's a temptation. I saw you, and then yeah. like when my like people come up to me and say, I saw you, and like, and I, I there's only so much you, you try to remember something from yeah. it. And, yeah. But, but also, you know, I don't think that's yeah, what I, I wouldn't do. be embarrassed by what you did. Wait, what? I wouldn't feel like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. (laughs) But that's what comedians do. That's the difference. Billy Joe Armstrong is a a rock star. Yeah. Comedians are trying. Our currency is a little moment. So if someone says, hey, Pete, I saw you. If people say, this isn't real. But if someone said, I saw you at the Paradise for your Thanksgiving Boston show, Mm. I would say, oh, man, I used to love doing that. You know, that's when I would be home to see my folks. So I felt really funny. Right, right. You just give them something the moment. Just give them something. Right. But it's for both of us. Yeah, yeah. I've started saying, this is silly, but meaning I don't know how you're going to feel about this. Meaning if it's your style. Okay. But if people say like, if someone comes up to me now and they say like, I love this or this, right? Mm. I just say something, maybe it's too much, but I go like, that really makes my day. Like I give yeah. it back. I think that's a nice thing to say. Thank you. Yeah, I think... I don't think you're surly or anything. I just think you're cool, and that's kind of hammy to be like, that makes my day! Yeah, I mean, you do... There's always the wondering, like, maybe for me, because I'm a little bit probably more of a sourpuss than you are, but they wonder, you know, like, if I'm being sarcastic or whatever, but... Well, that's funny. You do have that. You could say, like, thank you so much for your earnest condolences. Yeah. (laughs) Like, people would be like, yeah, always a (laughs) cut-up. Worst subtle punchline, but I get it. (laughs) Um, but I, I just did an interview with for Vulture. I don't know if they ever aired it, just about how to interact. How should people interact with comedians? And mm. I said, for me, generic compliments. I like that. Like someone just goes, oh, my husband and I loved your show. So great. That's very sweet. Love it's it. when they, when the things get a little creative, that's when. Like, can you think of one? Um, I mean, I've had people critique me after the show. I've had people just. <laughs> I did this, I mean, I got a guy on the street in Austin. Well, Austin, this is a good story. I opened for for Louie years ago, and um, I was at the merch booth, and it was a good show. Like, I did very well, and it was like a thousand people at Paramount. This guy, like, walks up and goes, okay, like, here's what I saw. I'm like, what? And he starts telling me, like, you know, did you ever think, like, moving around more? Like, he's, like, telling me, comparing me to Louie's style. It's like, I know, what are you doing, man? Like, I was really mad because, like, you're telling me? You're... Yeah. And I go, what do you do? He goes, I'm a geologist. I go, okay, well, maybe that's not your line of uh, expertise. No, man, I want to help you And rock. it was funny because then a woman <laughs> afterwards, the next woman in line goes, well, what the fuck? What was that? That makes it almost worth it. It, it gets even better. Afterwards, I'm leaving the venue. She says, that's his girlfriend. And they're out there talking. <sighs> and it's like... So she sold him out. She sold him out. Side. She was mortified. Of I'm course. sure it's not the first time he's done that. But but he walked away and goes, oh, lesson learned. Yeah, I hope so. Well, have you heard that theory that men, look out. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just saying men in, t- in, uh, in uh, what's the word? General. <laughs> that was the word you were searching for. <laughs> That's you a big, it's a tough one. It's a big one. That's a five cent word right there. You got to hand it to the general store. What do they got there? General stuff. <laughs> Just general. It's a store. Uh, there's something there. Anyway, in general, men are the ones that get, um, uh, do- they feel dominated when a comedian is making everyone laugh. They're the ones oh, that yeah. feel like their territory is being invaded. This yeah. is actually a compliment to women. Women tend to be more like, it's a show. I'm enjoying a show. But men are usually the hecklers. I know there are women hecklers, but it's I, usually guys that are like, why are you titillating my girl? I have a d- very distinct memory. I think it was the DC Improv where there was a couple up front and she was looking at the show and laughing and then he was angled towards her, kind of whispering. And it's like, oh, it's killing you. <gasps> that I'm making her laugh. Yeah. And you don't make her laugh. Yeah. Like he's like, mm, mm, like let her fucking enjoy that he's she's around tags. a man who's funnier than you are. Right. 
What? We don't do that. But well, even like the angle of him, he was like angled towards her. Yeah. From the front row. Well, we are kind of like masseuses in a way. Yeah. It's like we'll take more care. Like we took a lot of care to be funny. Yeah. yeah. As a way, a masseuse takes a lot of care to like figure out the way the muscle. And I'm gonna rub. But it is sort of intimate. It's like something you're supposed to do on a date. Right. Right. Supposed to something not that you massage on a date, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's the co. It's the outsourcing of something intimate. Right. Make me delighted. Yeah. Yeah. Or relax me, or make it's me. It's a feel. weird. It's a weird job. I think it's the same thing as a personal trainer. The cliche of like, oh, he fucked his personal trainer, or, or she fucked her personal trainer. It's like. Yeah, there's something going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a like, little close. It's very close. <laughs> yeah, it's like you still have someone stretching you, and you're like, yeah. Oh. Well, that's the joke, right? Like in a comedy, the guy's like stretching out your girlfriend, right, right. And, and you're supposed to just be like, because uh, you know, in a perfect world, wouldn't that be you guys working out together? <laughs> right. <laughs> but you're at, you're at home. But I, I mean, I've had, I've also had women say obnoxious things after show, and but I mean, for the most part, I went for the record. 99% of the people are nice and fine. And For easy. sure. I find, have you experienced this phenomenon? If you are heckled, mm -hmm. the last, I don't know, three times I've been like classic, maybe not me, but someone else on the show. Mm -hmm. It was someone I know who brought someone. Oh. Like a girlfriend who gets drunk, but they're not interested in the show. They're yeah, not invested. I... And they feel like they have some like uh, authority. Like I know a guy who knows the guy. So I'm going to be like, ah! That's like, I mean, I've had people thrown out who are on my guest list. I think that's more than I, once. That's what I'm saying. Yes, they're on the guest list. Yeah. This is a phenomenon, right? I mean, I just remember once I did, I think it was Hilarities. I think that's in Cleveland a long time ago. And I ran at some people like, it's like a multi-level place. And I ran at someone in the bar who was like, who recognized me. And I go, well, oh, well, I'm doing a show downstairs. When are you all coming? And the guy was making phone calls from the front row. Like this is when people would make calls. Wow. Not just this pretexting, I think. And I said, you got to go, man. You got to go. You can boot the guy. Yeah. I mean. It, I I'm, brought you into this world. I will take you exactly. out. Cosby. Great person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just you have to acknowledge. Bad guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good line. Bad guy. Um, But. Yeah, I mean, I, another time at the DC Improv, I had someone thrown out the last five minutes of the show. You couldn't wait five. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just almost like I like you, them. Right. It's just like, I'm going to, I could just finish this up. And I just like, you know what? Get, get out. But I also. That's so funny. I, you oh, know, you I booted them. Yeah, I had them booted. Yeah. But now I, I, I can't remember the last time I had anyone booted. Well, I can actually. <laughs> when did you boot? I. This was it was I did this small town in Maine that has like a nice little theater, and I literally right before I went on stage, I go, "Hey, if there are any assholes, can we deal with it?" And he goes, "Yeah, I'm all over it." The minute I walked out, a guy just the worst sort of dopey heckling, not like you suck, but just like contributing and just I can't give an example of what he said. And I was like, "Oh, you got to get rid of this guy." This is the first five minutes. Yeah. So you're like, "This is what I got a long road." Of Gaffigan, I'm in. Uh... It doesn't matter. Somewhere in Illinois. Uh -huh. He's uh, he's doing his set. The guy won't stop going meow. Remember the Super Troopers thing? Oh, God. They're going, all right, meow, meow, meow. I'm like, sometimes I say this. What is the fantasy that yeah. like, it's like the Mark Wahlberg rock star movie. Like, I'm going to be like, you're right. This guy's funny. And like, give him the mic and then you murder. Right. And then you you have my car. What like What, what do you want? <laughs> I just I'm on your side. I'm trying to entertain you. Right. And they just they just like do you, it's like do you think he wants to hear that? Yeah. Do you think anyone wants to hear that? Yeah. And then you got to like find the guy and Gaffigan plays big places so <laughs> fucking find a guy in a hockey arena. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But I found my I've cultivated <laughs> I think a really nice fan base. Yeah, I mean No, you have great fans. And so I'm it's like if you acted like that at one of my shows, you would you're in the minority. You're in the minority and you'd look like an idiot and, yeah. and no one would want you. This to. was a long time ago, but I remember you were the one that told me, like, if you're going to St. Louis, do like the Firebird, like the oh, yeah, rock yeah. clubs. Yeah, yeah. You were kind of an early adopter to that model. Um, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, probably one of the earlier people to do it. But yeah, that's what I kind of do now. And I play. Oh, I will do. I like comedy clubs. If it's like, a you know, you do a Tuesday or a Monday or something yeah, and yeah. you just do a one night. Well, it's a way of filtering out for lack of a better term, the riffraff. Well, I mean... The, like, it's either frozen yogurt or Todd Berry. Like, look, I love you. I've been there too. 
But it's not the best. You well, want someone who wants to see the show. I just always felt like, yeah, exactly. I'd rather play to 150 people who want to be there. Yeah, love me than like, because sometimes I've done, I've done shows like, hey, we can add, we can give out 50 tickets. No, I'm I'm all right I'm with good. a small crowd. I'm good. I mean, it's I'd love to play to a huge crowd, but I, the I'll, worst shows are papered. Yeah, and just like you're not doing me any favors by bring. You know, I might make new fans, but I also if no. someone's going to be shitty. It's yeah. going to be one of the freebies. Of course it is. When I was barking at the bus, they were like, "Never say free. Say no cover." You say free, it means nothing. It means cheap, yeah. It means nothing. Who yeah. cares? It's free. Fucking yell out. Who cares? It's a sales thing too. I'm kind of fascinated by sales. Not in like I've never really. Well, I guess I've done some sales, but like the Wolf of Wall Street kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Remember in Wolf of Wall Street, they were like, uh, sell me this pen. Remember? I never saw that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's a salesman. Yeah. And his whole thing is like, sell me this pen. And right. he gives the salesman the pen and he goes, this is the best pen in the world. And like, it's an exercise. It's a sales exercise. Mm -hmm. So his name is Jordan Beaufort, Beaufort, Bowfinger, Jordan Bowfinger. <laughs> And they said, uh, I saw that guy, Jordan, on a real show. And they're like, sell me this pen. He must get it all the time. Yeah. Because they want to see what the master would do to sell right. a pen. And what he goes is, I, I, don't, I don't do that. He goes, the first thing I say is, are you in the market for a pen? Because I don't want to sell. You can't sell a guy a pen right. who's not in the market for a pen. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like comedy, when it's done for people who aren't interested, not in the market for a pen, mm -hmm. to quote Nate Bargatze, it's a mean speech. It's also just like a weird overshare sometimes. You, to me, bad comedy when it's not connecting is their their feeling is why are you telling us this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, have you done shows where you're you thrust a show upon people like of we're course. like. Like, oh, these people had no idea. Here we are. The guy I'm staying with now, Jonathan Groff, who's a comedian. I, was telling, he used to, I knew him when he did stand-up, not the actor, same name. But he he did a show once, I think, in the Boston area, where it was like Super Bowl Sunday or something, where there was a big game. Where they turn the TVs Where the off? TVs like, were on like a lift. And I they can't. Just, and like, here it's showtime. And like, what the fuck? You? You've upset them? Yeah. And now you're going to say like, my mom is Lithuanian? Like, why are you telling us this? <laughs> we're the watching other, the game, yeah. The other weird thing that I've been putting to my comic friends lately is comedy is one of those strange things where if you get really good at it, you're rewarded by being asked to do it in places it has no business being. You know what I mean? Like a corporate show yeah. or like... You know, it's weird. Private those, party. Those, I mean, I'm doing one of those. Those are the ones that pay the l most, and also the ones that I'm um, sick to my stomach till the minute I'm done with them. Of course, not literally, but just like oh, oh the show fuck. starts when you get there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like the show starts with you being like kind of in character right. and happy and grateful. When really in your mind you're just like. The last one I did, and I, again, I'm grateful for this show. Like you said, it's a great opportunity, but like. It was in a nightclub. Most of it was like open air. There was like a Vegas pool behind me and everyone was blacked out drunk. And I was just like, uh, like you're, it's fight flight. You yeah. go into fight flight. And those gigs, you know, because you're getting a big paycheck, you can't, you got to be like, I got, if I said I'm doing 45 minutes, I got to stay up here 45 minutes. That's right. I can't just go, fuck this. I'll, it becomes I'll an, walk. yeah, it's an endurance challenge. Yeah. And it's just like a contractual obligation. Yeah. But, um, fuck, I was just going to say something. Oh, uh, the guy you lived with with the TVs in nah, Boston. That's, we're done with him. We're done with that. Uh, Corporate gigs and the obligation to stay on stage. They're good paying. Uh, Fight flight. I did one in Vegas. It was. Uh, I forgot, air. man. Eh, it doesn't even matter. It'll come back to me. I wonder, like, forgive me if you get this a lot. I love your style. I f I feel like you. I don't know if I want to say redefine, but you like you have your your own lane. Yeah. I see Todd Berry types. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> this guy? No, no. That's so funny. Do you remember when we met you? Kumail opened for you outside of oh, Chicago yeah. Yeah. when we were open micers. It was Milwaukee, and, and there was That's a racist right. heckler. And I, Someone I I yelled to go back to Pakistan. I think I, boot, to I did boot the guy. You booted him. Yeah. But I, it was heartbreaking. That's, this is kind of weird that that's, I do remember that. The, the most memorable thing may i can't say for kumail that that was a, a brutal moment was we were so excited to meet you and like oh. go to dinner do you remember we went to dinner uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. jog your memory no 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 i'm gonna jog your memory it was during the tomato ban T tomatoes had been recalled okay and i remember you got a salad with no tomatoes yeah 
And I think you were like, no, I just hate tomatoes. <laughs> like it wasn't because of the ban. <laughs> you just don't like tomatoes. I was so ahead of the curve on that. Either. You were already, <laughs> you were already paying out like as a Todd Berry. Right. And I also remember during this meal, I asked you if I could run a bit by you. Really? Yeah. I hope I. It did that. How did I respond? I'm afraid to ask. No, you weren't. You weren't overly salty. You. I'm going to say this with earnestness. You were appropriately reluctant. Okay. But like accepting. Yeah. You were kind of like yeah, but you weren't like yeah, man, let's jam. You know what I mean? Because that's hard. Because like <laughs> of I course, I'm sure you had like younger comps. Hey, would you watch my set? Yeah. And like, well, that really puts me. I, I remember having a conversation with someone. I got kind of puts me in an awkward position. I was explaining it to him. He's like, oh, don't worry, you can say anything to me. I can't because I don't yeah. know you. Right. I can say the worst shit to my friends because they know I'm fucking around. Right. But I not can't, you. I'm not going to say, because chances are you're going to be bad. I don't say this out loud, but it's yeah. like, so I'm going to have to find some spin that's positive. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I also. It takes a lot of energy. Yeah. People, I mean, I, I was awkward when, I'm still awkward, but I was awkward in a new newbie comedy sort of way when I started. So I'm sure I. When you started, you were even. Like <laughs> you have to say even more awkward than you are. That's what you're about to say. Well, you man. know what's funny, Todd, is I recognize myself in you. I see when I saw you when I was young at that time, for example, I wasn't like, oh, there's Todd. He 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 might be an uncomfortable guy. I didn't yeah. think that at all. Yeah. Now that I'm a grown up, I'm yeah. kind of like, yeah, those are the earmarkings of a guy who's developed a very sharp wit because you might be a little bit. Yeah. Like watching your stuff now, I wrote it down. I was like. You seem incredulous and uncomfortable with life, not with doing stand-up. Oh. Like your take is usually like, really? You're going to make me yeah. this, 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 yeah. even though this? Yeah. It's very, um, I say this with full respect, it's a little spectrumy. It's a little kind of like over-analytical. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Am I the first? <laughs> I might be spectrumy, but I mean, everyone's. I, all comics are. You think so? I absolutely think we Do you have ADHD? Sprinkled. And I definitely have I, yeah, I th a sprinkle of that as well. I realize that's like the, I feel like now that I'm learning about it, I was like, oh man, this, this explains so much. What did you learn? Just I, even just like, I'm a messy and I'm yep. hoardery. Yeah. One trait Do I keep don't- things out? Like I need things out. Yeah. Or I just like lose my keys two or three times a week and just like- how did I lose my keys? I just stepped in. I mean, I just stepped into my apartment and my keys are gone. I got, what did I do with them? And 20 minutes looking for them. Yeah. But so I have that. So, But then do you have the hyper focus as well? I do have the hyper focus. I think on stage and I think like my, I'm pretty quick on stage. Yeah. Like my crowd work. But uh, <laughs> is I think I'm pretty sharp and quick. But I think that's because I think ADHD people just sort through, you know, even though they're scattered in some ways, they also will just go. Whoo, well, they get a lot of info. They get right to the point. Yeah. Like, and what we hear might be the seventh thing you thought of. And the first seven might have been like really clear and easy to follow. But by the time you get that far out, it might seem kind of like, well, that was out of nowhere or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But really, it's just because we chopped away the first six. Right. I mean, I had a therapist say that if you have ADHD, it's, it's probably good for what you do. I think so. But, I, but it also makes it... Uh, what, what? I was going to say, one trait I don't have after watching the number of TikTok videos is uh, lateness. Like, I'm extremely punctual. Yeah. Like, to a fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I'm, I'm a punctual person as well. So, I mean, I guess you could have ADHD and not have every attribute to it, but... Yeah. But also, do you get that thing where you're on stage and it's like a break from your mind? Like, you just get that tunnel and... Yeah, you get kind of... Ideally, you're kind of floating a little bit. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like, oh, this is breezy. I feel like in your style, I envy your style to this extent, meaning I feel like if you're having a nice floaty set, yeah, the way you're doing it, I feel like affords you the ability to enjoy it more. Like if I'm killing, yeah, that means I'm like spitting and yelling and you know what I mean? I'm not like say I'm not super physical, but I'm more energized. I have jokes that require hitting this note and right, that, you right. know what I mean? And like you can really just go like yeah. kind of get into your body and it's almost like you're savoring it and I'm kind of shoveling it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point you're, i like that but can you enjoy it on stage because you seem like you do yeah i enjoy it i mean sometimes if i'm if i've just done a joke for too long yeah you're just like what am i what did i just say like i yeah. don't even know what i just i kind of but i mean comedy to a certain extent is 
um, repeating shit that you've done over and over and over again. Yeah. And acting like you're having, you've having never a good said, time. Yeah. I mean, I do have a good time. I love that line in Comedian where he goes, You were looking, someone says to Jerry, You looked like you were having fun. And he goes, That's my job. <laughs> and he says it joylessly, just like that. He goes, That's my job. And I was like, Yeah, I appreciate that about Jerry in general, is that he, general, it's back. I could remember it. Holy that shit. Time. Is that uh, is that he just he's very matter of fact. He's like, yeah, yeah. That's the job, y'all. You don't like it? Well, you got to do it. I, I remember what seeing him for. once. He kind of did. He went on at the cellar and did a Q and A, and he's like, "Any have any questions? Anyone? Very famous comic on stage, something, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Extremely famous comic on stage. I like that in your new hour, your new record, which is called Domestic Short, Short Hair. Domestic short hair. Yeah. I got it right. All right. Uh, it's fantastic. Oh, I thank love you. it. Yeah, it's so funny. And you really are one of a kind. I think that's maybe one of the best compliments. I'm not saying yeah, I like it. you should compliment my compliment, but I feel like that's the Okay, one of you're one of a kind also. No. <laughs> <laughs> As a compliment giver, I'm one of a kind. <laughs> but you play with the idea of fame. You've always done that. What the joke for me, the Todd Berry joke that made me this is exaggerated. I was a fan, but really turned me over, yeah. won me over. I think you were on Conan. Yeah. I watched it on TV, uh -huh. like getting it on TV, on a television. Right. And you said, uh, I'm sure you remember, you go, I've masturbated in all the best hotels <laughs> in the country. <laughs> and I think you said Super 8 is the best. It was Ramada Inn. Ramada yeah. Inn is the best one to masturbate I mean, in. there's more context to that, but... Uh, yeah. I'm ruining it by jumping right <laughs> to the And as chorus. you're saying, I'm going, well, I'm tempted to deny saying that. No, it wasn't me, man. It was another comic. But yeah, <laughs> that was me. There's more... There's a whole joke there, but yeah. Uh, well, what made it memorable was that you were saying masturbate on, like, on TV. Yeah. Like, that had to be as close to the edge as you could be. Even though it's, it seems so mild now, yeah. At that time, this is probably two thousand. Yeah, Conan let you get away with. Well, they had masturbating bear, you know. Right, right. The character, right. right but yeah. you were saying it, but then the the tag, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not doing your joke justice. And there is more context, and it's not a creeper joke. If no, you're no, feeling no. Any, it's just about yeah masturbation. Uh, you go. They are Ramada is the best one to masturbate in. No, I'm not being paid to say that. <laughs> I did not remember that. And I That's... just was like, I had never seen that level it's very commonplace now uh -huh. but it is because you sort of were one of the pioneers that ushered that in what i'll call like a hyper consciousness mm -hmm. how what am i saying and also how how are you hearing it yeah kind of thing yeah and when you said that i i really uh was one yeah that's a good line i mean i like that line not to praise myself but it's great but the new record has a lot of stuff like that yeah. like making fun of the fact that you were in the wrestler yeah or pootie tang yeah, yeah playing with the idea of celebrity and like i i just wonder what is your take on your level of fame you seem to oh, make fun I, of it i have i i mean i think i have the most manageable manageable level i get enough where like in la like every i've been recognized a couple times a few times yeah but it's like a thing I've always said, and I've never always said this, but I mean, <laughs> I've in, always my, thought. in my many interviews about how famous I am, I have, <laughs> but I feel like I'm like somebody, if I will leave and walk around New York for three hours and don't get recognized, I, it's not surprising. But mm. if I do, it's not surprising. Yes. But it's not like, you know, walk, not like I'm Chris Rock where like, oh, here we go. Right. I'm going to walk three blocks and stop time, 10 times. Right. Every single time I go for a walk. It's a meet and greet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you like it? I like it for the most part. Yeah. Because most, it's kind of nice. And there's, you know, times where, you know, you get some free, someone comps you an appetizer at a restaurant or something. Yeah. That's really the only time I like it. No. I, well, it's, I just, you came up with so many people i just what here's what i'm really getting at you seem good and i like that i've, I've watched you on some other i watch on berbiglias mm -hmm. you just seem like a new not that you were ever neurotic or antsy but i was like you seem to have uh, reached a, a level of self-appreciation self-understanding and tranquility yeah even it's called jaded it's called jaded but it doesn't feel jaded no i know but i mean like I think I heard you say something on Mike's podcast along the lines of like, you've watched other people blow up around you, mm -hmm. but you feel good where you're at. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, some like, some, I made the mistake of reading the, the, a comment in my YouTube special and someone was like, something about me not being popular or something like, I can see why this is unpopular. It's like, well, it's over half a million views, which well. if you compare it to Bill Burr, yeah, it's, but he's more famous than me. 
Yeah. Like it's right. Like, it's like not, and also I'm more famous than whoever made that comment. Right. Yeah. Um, it's all relative. So I mean, I do have a, I've, I mean, I've been doing this 37 years, so I um, even I always feel like oh, I'm about to break, and I'm, <laughs> now I'm like six. I'm I'm like 60. I'm 60, and like I guess I got what I got, but yeah. I are you like a Seinfeld guy in the sense that he's like the reward is the job. I mean, I yeah, strive to that. I don't well, have that all the time. He also has a billion dollars in the bank. Right, right. Yeah, he's, they're giving him a check for a million. The reward really? is the job plus the billion dollars I have. To <laughs> the best part is the jokes. I mean, I try to remind myself like when I'm feeling shitty, but I mean, it's like all it's like everything gets romanticized. Like even like. When you're 14, you're like, if I have a girlfriend, my life's going to be the best. And right. you, you don't imagine, like, and then you're fighting over something stupid, and you're fucking mad. And like, dude, why, why didn't she text back or shit like that? Right, you're right, not thinking right. of any of that. You're just going, this, this. so. That's life. You yeah. really just hit on something there. But I do try to remind myself, like, you know, I tell jokes for a living. I travel. Yeah. I make decent money. Uh, but, you know, but at the same time, you know, if you if you just killed on a special and then couldn't find your wallet an hour later, you'd be fuck. Yeah, you know, what I mean? right? You wouldn't be like, hey, I just did a special. It's easy. I mean, I wouldn't be that. I would be. I'd be thinking about my lost wallet. But right. <laughs> well, well, how you feel right now is how you feel is how your life is going. Well, I mean, I think that's how I like. To yeah, I, I put it that way. I think it's the thing also where I mean, people say oh, I met this celebrity. He was an asshole. Well, he's probably an asshole. 20 years ago. You know? Right. It's not new. Mm -hmm. Well, they can afford to be. Yeah. And then sometimes they can't. We love a nice... Now they're... Uh, I just I just saw HBO had a trailer for like the Kevin Spacey... Like, mm -hmm. Have you seen this? It's like no. the expose thing. No. I haven't watched it. You know, it's like interviewing the victims of, of, of right. this creepiness. And I was like, that's all valid and fine. I also think it's interesting how we just... We do salivate at like a tearing down a yeah I, I, but which is totally valid i'm not yeah no, no no hot take here i'm just right. saying it's the same with a murder docuseries we love watching like robert durst the jinx i'm also watching that yeah it's i'm like, watching that too yeah. we like it more because he's a billionaire it's <laughs> oh, more fun that you're like yeah where's your heated toilet seat now like exactly. we like that we like the equalizing element yeah it is fat like i'm fascinated by white collar criminals who are like you're already making twenty million a year, and you do this little fraud thing, and then, now you're in fucking jail. I know. You're in, I you're live in better than you do. Yeah, you're in regular jail. I think about that too. Yeah, jail is like <laughs> that's my worst nightmare. Jail. Yeah, terrible. I can't. I some people like won't think about death. I'll think about death before I'll think about. And oh, no, okay. if anybody in, is incarcerated listening to this, I wish you hope and peace and joy and and get through it. But I, I feel for you, man. Oh, yeah. I think I, yeah, I think they would be appreciative of... They wouldn't be like, why is he shitting on jail? No. <laughs> <laughs> or, or this podcast just makes it worse. <laughs> what's, what's, why is he dissing jail, man? See, that's the incredulous. <laughs> I always think of your joke, too. Uh, somebody sat on your lap and someone went, she was boundaryless. Do you remember oh, yeah, that yeah, joke? Yeah, that was uh, when I went to Sweden once. Yeah. And yeah, if I recall the jokes, I'm like... Oh, that some guy sat on my lap, or someone someone sat on my lap, and, that, and this woman said, "Oh, that that person's boundaryless." And I was like, <laughs> "I feel like this is before." Now I feel like we say boundaryless more because of therapy. But, but it was back just a, then; it was really it was such a fucking like perfect word yeah. for, for someone whose English isn't their first language. Yes, and I just I don't remember, but I yeah, I no, did the joke. It's but. fantastic. Here's a weird Todd Berry question. Oh, okay, have you ever not just deliberately experimented with different levels of energy but have you ever just kind of inadvertently without planning it just done a set you were in an incredible mood and you were just like wow i i kind of like changed up the style i mean i i think i have changed because i listened to like my first album and i spoke in his cadence that was like Medium I found energy? it unlistenable. Oh, really? Like, I mean, the jokes are solid. <laughs> They're pretty good jokes. But I just like that. It was just like that. Nah, 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 nah. like, yeah. Like, and I didn't realize until people started doing impressions of me to my face. Like, 
oh god i really fucking talk like that now i hopefully i'm more, i think i'm more naturalistic in my talk i think that's true now that you god, say i it. just god i'm glad i snapped out of that like i don't even know how i snapped into that to begin with but to, to your question i mean i haven't no i mean i i just like you're a high energy comic but you're organically high energy I think it would be inauthentic. I don't feel yeah. like you're turning it on no. to kill, but it's definitely been, it's, it's my low energy. That's not directly answering your question, but has um, hurt me more off stage than it has on stage. Well, what do you mean? Like bookers, like, I don't know, like there's, you know. Oh, cause they, you seem aloof or something. No, they just think that someone should be jumping up and down and screaming. And oh. it's like, no, I actually don't need to do that. Wow. So I'll go on after. I mean, I've followed them. You know, people are killing, and I and I just do my thing. Right. I mean, sometimes I can't follow them, but right. sometimes every I would comic- actually think your perfect placement would be after three three people doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I was making a lineup. You would really just smoke me. You'd be like... <laughs> no, because what I noticed, it's the pinch hitter element. Yeah. It's like, if, if there are three U's, and then I go up, it's mm-hmm. just going to be exciting that somebody's doing something new. Mm-hmm. It's it's what Bill Burr said about um, playing uh, black rooms. He was like, "Well, you're the you're the outlier. Mm-hmm. You're the weird white guy. You're the corny white guy with red hair. You already have an in. People are already kind of interested. Yeah. So, so anything different, any way to switch it up. Yeah. So I would imagine if it was you know I'm not what did I say dragging any of these people, but if it's Steve Byrne, Dane Cook. You know, and then you, I think that would be, people would be like, this is cool. Something's yeah, happening. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be afraid to follow that yeah. trio. But That's I mean, it depends on where we're, you know, where I'd be afraid to do that at a, at a big place. Yes. Yeah. I'd be afraid to do that. You need to be able to connect. Yeah. You need to, I almost feel like you want to be able to, like you particularly would like to be able to see them. I do like seeing yeah. them. I like the lights up a little bit. Me too. Like I know people who like, when I light pitch it up. black, it's like, I feel like I'm, I hate it. Scared, like in a cave. I wonder if that's an ADD thing as well, because I'm just like, who am I talking to? Yeah, I I wonder if it seems counterintuitive because you think, oh, I wouldn't want to see them. I don't want to look at them. But but I want to see smiles, like just find someone smiling. And honestly, man, I said, I I was just trying to notice any Spectrum-y stuff. For me, Spectrum-y, I need to look at them. I need all the information I can. Yeah. Not just laughs, because maybe it's the wrong kind. I want to see how they look. I want to see if they're leaning forward. <laughs> if there's too many of these, something's wrong. Yeah. I need to see all of, all that I can. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a general, for me, it's just a general, like, you know what a happy audience looks like. And if you're looking out and you see... Yeah. And you're like, all right, I'm doing well. I'm supposed to, this is going totally. well. I, and it, but I, pitch black, I can't. I just... I, it's like doing... I've, I haven't done DMT. I've done some variants of it. But like like a void, like doing a psychedelic trip of doing mm-hmm. comedy into a infinite blackness. Yeah. And there's yeah, a spotlight I, on you. That's like, yeah, Twilight who zone. am I talking to? It's the opposite. And look, <laughs> I know nobody's asking me to do arenas, but I would, Todd, I would like to think that if Mike Berkowitz was like, Petey, that's my agent. You could do arenas. I'd be like, I'd rather do a thousand yeah. seats is so perfect. I mean, have you done a? Th- I know, of course, you, I'm not joking. Yeah. I, I, I mean, of course, you have. It's perfect. It's the perfect size. It's perfect big. It's big. It's big. Because I've sat in the back at comedy shows at like, what's oh, like a 2,500 seat. And you're like, I can't even see the person performing. No. And I think it shines a light on how silly it is. Yeah. There's just some guy talking. But I mean, and if you put it in uh, the fucking. Boston Garden, it, it becomes strange. And it's also like, yeah, I wonder, like, uh, it's you can, uh, you can say, oh, it's easy for you to say you wouldn't do arenas when no one's asking you to do arenas. Right, that's what but I feel is the joke I do here. think that, I, would, I don't think I would want that as my default place to do a show. Yeah. I would do it as a life experience and as a cash grab. But, I, but that's what it is. It is a cash grab. It is a cash grab. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. My schedule is packed, as you know, as a dad and a husband, but, and a comedian, I had that one at the end, I never ever skip on mental health. It is so important, even when I have big work stuff, it's easy to let your priorities slip, but therapy makes me happy, even though it can be hard to make time for it, you need to take that time to work on yourself. It's a non-negotiable, and if you've been thinking of giving therapy a try, 
BetterHelp is the way to do it. It is so easy. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. You can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. We talk a lot about therapy on the show, about how it's greater than the sum of its parts, how it's wonderful during times of transition, sometimes when you're uh, dealing with loss, a relationship, family, obviously, boundaries, codependency. It's so much more than just talking. Talking to a professional is the mirror we need to make the adjustments in our life that have real profound results and lead to more happiness and less stress. Certainly for both me and Val, you know we talk a lot about it on this show. So never skip Therapy Day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash weirdo. If you've been thinking about giving it a try, what a great way to support this show and support your life. Betterhelp.com slash weirdo for 10% off your first month. We're also brought to us by our friends at Ritual. I was just on the road in Madison and Ritual Multivitamins and their Symbiotic Plus pre, post, and probiotic are the two supplements I always, always, always take with me. Why? Because if supporting foundational health was a sport, trust me, you would want Ritual on your team. They made Essential for Men, that's the multivitamin that I take, based solely on science and it's designed to help fill common nutrient gaps in the diet with 10 key nutrients. Obviously, as a vegan, that's super important to me, B12, vitamin D, you gotta get this stuff in your diet. Also, B vitamins for energy, so huge. According to the CDC, fewer men than women meet the minimum daily intake requirement for uh, recommendations, rather, for fruits and vegetables, and men are more likely to overvalue exercise and undervalue nutrition. Well, I say cut it out. Enter Ritual, a multivitamin scientifically developed to help men fill nutrient gaps in their diet. I absolutely love it. The 10 key nutrients in the two delayed release capsules help you get uh, that stuff into your system, meaning delayed release. Most people complain you take a vitamin and you just pee it out. It turns your pee the color of a highlighter and you just feel like you're flushing it out and getting no effect. Well, these dissolve later in the small intestine, which is the optimum place to absorb nutrients. It's also gentle on an empty stomach. I fast, I do fasting every week. So it's gentle, which means it's not going to upset my my belly. And it has a minty essence in every bottle that makes taking your multis actually enjoyable. Mix that with the Symbiotic Plus, which is so important for my gut health. And you've got a routine, a daily routine that I never miss that makes me feel ready to go and ready to start my day. Wonderful vegan, non-GMO, verified gluten and major allergen free, certified B Corp and made traceable so you know where all of these nutrients are coming from. Give it a try. Support your body. Support your show. I can say since I've been taking a ritual, my visits to the doctor have been completely different. I've noticed a huge difference in my blood work. So get it going. It is the best multivitamin out there that I've discovered. So Essential for Men is a quality quality multivitamin from a company you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash weird. Start Ritual or add Essential for Men to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash weird for 25 percent off the stories of you said seinfeld at the cellar that's that's the way how cool is that yeah or rock you just see rock at the cellar and you're like this is, but you know those guys aren't necessarily swinging for the fences they're probably trying new stuff yeah but i would love to see one of those guys in a thousand a thousand is nice a thousand i think is good even like 500 i think is good i know th- largo is 300 yeah heaven yeah, yeah. It's, Literally, it's have it on her. Yeah. Couldn't be better. But I mean, there's that whole thing of like, if you're demand, like, hey, and also, do you want to go to Indianapolis for five nights and do a theater? But why not? Why not do five shows? Yeah. Instead of one yeah. big, massive fuck-off like, show? Do you like doing two shows in a night? Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. I wish I didn't hate it. But I heard it. I just realized I'm 45. I was like, oh, I'm getting older. That's one of the ways. I know. Is like, I, I didn't used to think, where was I? I was just listening to... Bill Burr on Bill Maher. Bill on Bill. But they were, t- yeah, yeah, <laughs> they were yeah. talking about back when you do the Cleveland Improv, three shows on Saturday. You just do it. And now I'm like, when I do two, and Bill said something perfect. I'm sorry I'm quoting another podcast on this podcast. Yeah. But he goes, the worst is the middle show on Saturday of three. Because you know you have another one. 
you're already tired from doing one. You're in the right, middle of the right, second right. one. And you know, the third one's fine because you're done. And the first one is just like, usually it's six o'clock. So it's like, yeah. that almost doesn't count. You're getting warmed up on yeah, the first one. The middle one is it's like, rough. This is a day's work. And, then, and I, I think we all do the job. We do it well, but God, I don't. Yeah. Like every time I get an offer where it's two shows, like, why is it that? Why do I yeah. have to do two shows? Yeah. I don't want to do two shows. I'm about to do Chicago. It's two shows for three nights in a row. At right? where? Uh, it's called the Den. Oh, it's that's great. where I did. One, that's where I did my special. It's a great choice. It is a great. It's a place. perfect club. Yeah, yeah. It's a perfect club. It's really good. Great sound. Yeah. Great layout. Are you filming something there? Or are you just. We've been shooting a doc, so they're filming me going a doc. Sorry, very L.A. But <sighs> who chops that doc? A documentary is what you're talking about. <laughs> We're shooting, I, but that sounds so pretentious. Yeah. I guess it's like the fiance of the film world my documentary fiance, but we, a, a crew has been following me around and we might do like an unconventional special that's jumping around venues. Uh -huh. But the feeling is the sets we shoot at the den will be the meat of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really good place. It's great. Last yeah. time I was there, I was like, Oh, why does this work so well? Yeah. Turns out sound and lights. <laughs> Todd Glass was onto something like sound and light and like see. Yeah. I've, I've had some good conversations with Todd Glass about yeah. this kind of, He's not a wrong. tight ship. He's not wrong. Yeah. And I don't think they do a check spot. Anyway, uh, are you still afraid of thunder? Do you remember when we lightning, were? Lightning, yeah. Lightning. And thunder. And Both. storms, I guess. Together. But it's really the lightning that if I had to choose. But you were raised in Florida. Yeah. A lot of storms. Yeah. So where did it? I don't know where it came from. I mean, I remember we were on, it was your podcast actually. At G yeah. Either at South by South. Yeah, yeah South you've by done South a live one before. That's how with Judd Apatow was on it. The most successful podcast of all time. Really? You're not aware of this? No. Sorry, I thought this. I thought you were in on this riff. We call that the most like productive podcast of all time. Kumail did the big sick with Judd after yeah. that pod. I did crashing with Judd after that uh, pod. Chris Gethard, I think, was on that pod as well. Yeah. He did career suicide with him. And then, uh, and the joke is, and then also Todd. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd, Todd got to say hello to Judd at the cellar when he runs into him. Uh huh. That, thought, is, that is funny. I thought that was honestly. I thought that was a joke you started. It was like, no, look no, at no, what I, happened. I didn't really, and I, also, I, I was I'm surprised there. I didn't make that connection. It seems like a very you kind of joke, but that was. The I think podcast. I didn't know about the Chris Gethard deal. That's what it was. I is that correct? Can you? Look up if Chris if Judd worked on career suicide. I think he did. I'm not positive. Though. But yeah, I remember that. I think you said, "Why are you afraid of lightning?" And I yeah. said, "I think I said it's electricity that comes from the sky." And yeah, I mean, it's no, like, that's correct. Yeah, it's like, and then I thought of other lines for that afterwards. But you don't, you don't it, it, that we have confirmation. Okay. Um, you don't remember where it came from because I remember being with you at Bonnaroo. Oh, and were there was there? a big. Oh, field. that was. I, I haven't been back to Bonnaroo. I think they won't have me back because of that. Wait. They won't have you back. It seems like I've, you wouldn't had, want to do it. I, yeah, I mean, they, maybe that's. I think it's probably a thing where they been asked back to buy. Okay. so I don't think it. I think, but they I think I did that. Turnover. with Kumail was there also. I think. And we have a lot of Kumail connections. Yeah, I saw him last night. By the way. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's back in the game. He's out there doing it. Yeah. Really? That's great. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't uh, know he's doing spots. But he. But. Yeah, I. I just. Uh, that loud, that Bonnaroo lightning was fucking. Brutal. No, it was scary. It was like, <laughs> it's one of well, thunder and lightning is one of those things. Like, why aren't we all scared of this? Like, how did we develop a little styrofoam around that issue? Right. But you were, again, you're not surly, but you are cool. And I saw a cool guy being scared. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like you don't, oh. you never see James Dean being. You're the comedy James Dean. You never see James <laughs> Dean looking like scared, really. No, no. I, and like that's it, what separates me from James Dean. The one thing that separates me from James Dean. <laughs> you, you really looked like. Why aren't you? Not only am I scared. Why aren't you all scared? Oh, I've I've run away from. I'll run, I'll run away from you if there's a lightning. Run. Yeah, like I'll, just turn and run. But I mean, luckily in New York. It's pretty easy to just stay home or duck in somewhere. Yeah. But I don't understand when I, you know, there's a storm and just people just look out the window like people with their umbrellas like, what the fuck are you doing, man? There's a sniper out there. <laughs> An electricity <laughs> sniper. I mean, I just, it's. Is that the fear? Have you, or like, is it that rational that you will get hit by lightning? Or is I it don't just even, kind of no, primal? Like it is loud? primal. Yeah, it yeah. is primal. And it's, it also gets to the point where like, you know, there'll be like, 
I think near where I used to live in the Lower East Side, there was like a some sort of traffic light that flashed. Mm. I think maybe they were taking pictures of license plates or something. I yeah. don't know. And that would go, and I would be if it was cloudy out, I would I would have a wow. fear. Of, I would like react. I mean, you're, to join you in this, I will need to do like a deep breath, calm down feeling. If a, if like a big truck with a loud muffler cuts me off, yeah. they sound like tigers. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, <gasps> every caveman feeling. Meaning this is like in your genes to yeah. be afraid. That's why you survived. Yeah, I don't know what, it, was, it wasn't like an incident, but. But I also understand, like, like I don't have a fear of flying, but I totally can wrap my head around why someone would be terrified of flying. It's Me ins- too. It's insane. Well, I'm just very, for, I feel fortunate yeah. that I'm just like, I'm glad I don't have that one. Yeah, like, I think, like, was it Aretha Franklin doesn't fly or didn't fly? You yeah. You have to take, like, a cruise ship to... Matt Damon and uh, Ben Affleck used to not fly. Really? Yeah, they drove from Boston to L.A. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like they're flying now. I think they're flying now. <laughs> I think Jay, once you date J-Lo and she's like, get on the jet, poppy. Yeah, we're not. Is that voice you know, okay? <laughs> I'm not, not going to stalk, but uh, what's that place that, what's that truck? Bucky's. I'm not going to stop. That's the giant truck stop. <laughs> we're not eating at Bucky's tonight. I'm J-Lo. Yeah, we're eating on the plane. I'm not going in that travel Which, plaza to go to the bathroom. That was something else Bill Burr said. He was like, flying private, and I've flown private a few times in my life, and he's right. It's worse. Because flying private is a cigar tube. It's the smallest little plane. I've done it a handful of times too. Yeah, and it's it, like if you want to laugh at the rich, in, let this brighten your day. Yeah, the fucking one percent. They're in these little tubes, and it's the most turbulent, scary flight. I feel like of I your remember. Life. Yeah, I remember. You want to be on a seven thirty seven? Yeah, I mean, I I think the thing about private jets is like. And I never like hired. I've been the beneficiary yeah, the of it. We're plus one jet yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, hand, a couple of times is yeah. that you walk in, and it's not like you're going to miss your flight because you're not going to miss your flight because they're waiting for you. Yeah. The pilot takes your bag. Yeah. There's nice snacks. I had a funny story. This is funny. So I was on a private jet with, uh, oh, and um, with who? With I guess with Louis. Not a, not I guess with Louis. With Are you going to say Oprah? <laughs> with Oprah, I was on a private <laughs> jet with Oprah, my good friend. But this, I was talking to the flight attendant and just like, have you had some bad people on here? Like like annoying or assholes? And she's like, she starts telling me about a woman. I go, oh, she sounds bad. And she goes, she was a cunt. <laughs> I was like, well, I, I'm not on JetBlue right now. I guess <laughs> flight attendant just called someone a cunt. <laughs> If <laughs> she said it with like a big smile, I was like, I was like, wow, that's the, that's the private advantage. Right oh my there. god! That, but and then she gave you a dragon roll, and then she gave me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the. But also, like you pull, you land, and then there's cars right next to the plane. No, it, again, Burr said this. He was like, the only bad part of flying is boarding, and he's right. Yeah. Once you're in your seat. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, even if I don't have a bag for the overhead, I still want to get on the plane because I just want to sit down and stop thinking about departures. Yeah, yeah. And even if there's a little delay, I don't care. Once we're on the plane, all you have to do is sit there. Do you fly first every, everywhere? I do fly first. Everywhere? So you'll pay? I won't fly first to Vegas. I won't fly first to San Francisco. You okay. Know, yeah, these yeah. Little, little flights. Where, where, what are you doing? Well, funny you ask that. It's not funny at all that you ask that. It's because what I'm really about to say is I'm really boring. That's why it's not funny. But uh, <laughs> boring. But right you I was that. sitting in the uh, mustard cafe over there, mustard tree. Yeah, yeah. And I was booking a flight, and I, I found no travel agent. Oh, no. Get a travel agent. Yeah. I mean, I have three bodyguards outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, a travel agent isn't that fancy. Um, but an AI is coming for him. You got to yeah. support him now. But the um. I follow all these like travel hackers, like miles hackers. If, are you into your miles? I'm not really into. Miles. Oh, really? Okay. And there's always like fly business class from China for twelve thousand points. Like this is ridiculous. And there was one for Air France, and I looked it up, and I got. I'm coming back from Amsterdam, business class, fifty thousand points. Wait, that's good points. That's really good. Yeah, that's like a four thousand dollar flight or five thousand. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why aren't I into? Fl- points I you get be. your miles i hope right? i do get miles so i'm good on delta yeah everyone likes delta I'm, delta I'm no i mean like delta is the one that they're like i'm pretty sure it's delta might be united 
Who has Premier 1K? You would know. Oh, United. United. Yeah. I'm good with United. Yeah, I'm United also. I'm a million miler with them. Really? But I always never this gotten past way, Platinum. I could, have this con- I could talk for f- six hours about this show. I was actually, it's funny. I was actually just thinking travel tips. Oh, yeah. On the drive down, not from you specifically, but I was like, what are the best travel tips? Can I, I'll start, but I want your best travel tips. Okay. I'm just going to get the ball rolling with an easy one. Okay. Get through security. Don't get a water. Don't get a coffee. <laughs> this is Bush League. Get the fuck through security. Yeah, yeah. You get through security before you sit down and have a leisurely coffee. And you think that sounds obvious. I see a lot of dumb fucks. Also, you're buying a, a drink you can't take through security. Right, right. Get through security. There's my helicopter. As we... <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have that clear thing? I don't have clear. I'm a, a pre-check guy. I have clear and pre-check. Cause Both. With my credit card, they pay for it. But Which one's that? Don't worry about it. No, it's um, American Express they Platinum. They pay for it? Yeah, they reimburse you for a year of clear membership. Every year? Yeah, yeah. Well, you pay a stupidly expensive annual fee. For but I mean, I might be getting it. Yeah, I think you get clear. one. Nice. Um, but clear, I find the most, for the most times, you know, you show up and there's like TSA pre-check on the right and clear on the left. And the pre-check's faster. Yeah. And the, But everyone thinks like, oh, fingerprints, space age. Like, yeah, you're... This thing was designed to not stall you, and it's stalling you half yeah. the time. I mean, sometimes yeah. I think it is quicker, but yeah. oftentimes... So pre- get clear with a question mark oh, yeah. is your tip? No, no. Oh, no, no. That wasn't... I was just... Oh, okay. I was reacting to your boarding thing. Give um, me a tip. Travel tip. I know I you got him. Here's one. Oh, I, I got Wheels one. out, dipshit. Your bag goes in wheels out. <laughs> Here, I got one. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I won't use dipshit in my <laughs> No, it's dipshit because people are so putting it in sideways. People, yeah. It goes lengthwise, wheels facing you. I would say if you need to make a change that you think you're not spo- not technically allowed to change, that's going to happen at the gate. That's not going to happen at the uh, reservation desk. Oh, so like what, what's a change? I just did one. Uh, I think she just got her to move me to like I was flying Air Canada and I didn't have like a premium seat and she moved me. I'm t- I'm with you. Gate has all the power. Yeah, because I feel like the, I mean, and can I say the gate is one of the few places where charm I think is still at play. Yeah, it's like a bazaar. And I've also found that some <laughs> of the grumpiest people will do the most for you. Really? Yeah, it's like, uh, can you upgrade me? <laughs> you oh. never know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. It's clicking, and so I've had that exact experience. The guy just looks so disinterested. Then he just hands you a fresh boarding yeah. pass. You're in seat one A. Like, what, think, what happened? Yeah, I think charm is the way. I mean, obviously, you want to be nice anyway. But yeah, there's advantages to it. But yeah, I think I think, I think so. they get. I feel like that job. Every time you see one of those reservations, you go, your job is you're getting yelled at every day. Yep. Can you imagine having a job where you get yelled at every day? Don't get me started. And also the person yelling at you is probably right. <laughs> That's right. You just have to eat shit is yeah. what you have to do. You're like a but, sin eater. So that would be a, I would say that's a travel tip. Uh, Window or aisle? Aisle. Aisle. Yeah. You like the meet and greet. I like the... Not, I like tucked away. I just... How do you... Can you sleep on a plane? If I'm in the window, well, that's nice. Oh, God. Also... If you're in the aisle, you're getting disturbed. Your comfort is is contingent on the on your window. The window guy or woman, they're the king of the row. I think I get real anxiety asking someone to get up so I can get out. Oh, I see. That's a weird anxiety I have. Like, I don't know if you can relate to this. Like, I can relate. Like if, if I'm having dinner or lunch or something with someone and I need to get to the bathroom, I get nervous to say, I need to just go to the bathroom. Interesting. I don't know why. It's, it's, I get very self-conscious. Yeah, Even I, though there's nothing weird about that. I don't have that one, but I will get nervous about... I have a really hard time saying no to certain people. Like, yeah. I'll get this weird, like, they're going to kill me. Or yeah, something yeah. like, I'll yeah. have, like, an over... That's my uh, share of neurosis. But, but I will... You know what I do on the pl- flight is I wait for them to go. Then when they go, I go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, they can do you that. Just wait, because they're yeah. going to go. Yeah. People on airplanes, they're all going. Yeah. Except me. I'm, I'm maybe once. On this flight that I just booked for, to, from Amsterdam, I got one of these rows where it's just just me in the row. Nice. Yeah. But... Are you doing shows there? I'm doing shows in Europe, yeah. Not in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Oh, you are doing Amsterdam, shows. Amsterdam, Vienna, Berlin, Munich, Zurich. Well, how do the... How, do you like the European? I've never done it. Yeah, I think you should do it. Tell me. Um, For the most... I mean, it's a little bit of... You take a pay cut. You might not, but I... Some of the gigs are, I think some of it's you do, I do for the allure of just going, 
Yeah, I'm playing a show, doing a show in Vienna. Wow. And I want to, I mean, it is a great life experience, but it's not like, it's not like Sting going to Vienna. <laughs> he makes more money than I do, but. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a, it's a free trip. I find the crowds like. Are they expats? Um, sometimes. I mean, I did a show in Bangkok, which was like doing a show in a British pub. Mm. But really, if you go to like, I did a show in Hamburg where they're all German, I think. There might be some Americans who know you. Yeah. Who, if they live there, they'll show up. But I found the crowds are like much more appreciative or very appreciative. They're just happy you're there. And like, because there's always the worry of like translating your stuff. Because mm. I'll be on stage and like, so I went to CVS. They don't have CVS. You know, you kind of have yeah. this. Yeah. You kind of like, you forget what's not I trans- thought you were going to say, don't worry about it. But <laughs> well, you are saying what you what do I've worry done about is, it. What I, I, I tried this and it worked is I'll just go. Because if they're nice people, they're just on board. So you just go, I want to do a joke about the store called CVS. <laughs> that, that, That's the way. It's kind of like a drugstore, but there's like, you can buy shampoo there. I feel you, like- what do you have there? And they go, oh, boots. Okay. Yeah. I was in, let's pretend this happened in boots. There you go. Yeah. See, you're good. You're really good at that. And sorry to keep bringing up Bill, but I did just oh, listen my, to this. Oh, this is like the 80th time I brought up. I know. Go ahead. But it was just hearing him on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he and you have something in common that I think I learned from maybe each of you. I'm not sure. But like, we're back to that hyper-conscious thing. Yeah. Where I, when I was opening for Bill in the very early stage of my career, I was like, what do you do if you're bombing? And he was like, just acknowledge it. Just be like, this is going horribly. And I was like, of course, it would take me years to learn how to do that without just making it worse. Yeah. Like, there's a funny way to do that. Yeah, there's a, I mean, yeah. Uh, I go the blame the audience route, but I... I uh, people say don't blame the audience. Who else am I going to blame? But there's definitely audiences, <laughs> and I found this. I mean, it's a finesse thing. There's definitely times where you're like, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's either me or them. We're going to cross me off the list. <laughs> Well, that leaves. What's, who's the other element in play here? I guess it's the audience. But I and found then beneath that sound and lights. Yeah, I found that uh, you know sometimes I've been on stage and it's not going the way, and you feel bratty. Keep bringing it up. Yeah. But other times I've said, "You guys, you know you're a terrible crowd, right?" And they'll howl because yeah. they do know they're a terrible crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's and well, it's not even insulting when you're in a terrible crowd. Yeah, I've been a part of a terrible crowd. It's not you. It's like, it's the crowd. Like we didn't sync up correctly. We are a terrible crowd. I say that to the, and if it doesn't work, if I'm rough with an audience and it doesn't work, I just go, I was just trying something. It's like, I'm trying to figure you out. I thought maybe you wanted me to roast you. I'm just trying to make you laugh (laughs) because I will turn on them too. I try not to. But the, the thing that I, when Shane Gillis did SNL and he did his monologue and at the end he went like this, I don't know if you saw that. Oh, no. He went, eh. And I'm watching it at home and I'm like, look, I relate because I like being hyper-conscious yeah. too and being honest and being like, this isn't going that well. But from at home, I was like, that was great. Yeah. I, and that's something Dave, my manager, and Val, my wife, are always like, Pete, stop saying you're not doing well. Yeah. Because in my mind, it should be like... <sighs> It's like also like everything. If someone can just be, shush, yeah, yeah. To me, I'm, Shane yeah. can do whatever he wants. I, I kind of thought it was funny that he did that, but like, I didn't think it was. Yeah, appropriate I, I did notice he did well. that he. I was like, that, that was it, it totally well. completely solid. Totally solid. Yeah. What are you doing? It's like when someone comes up to you after a show and, and you had you know you had a bad show and they're like that was great and you're like come on and then you're like why am I fucking making this yeah. person feel bad? They're complimenting me. Just be gracious. Val always tells me like you should have seen them. Like like I was watching a lady in the yeah. crowd. They yeah. were having the time of their lives. And, also, and you were going, oh, I, I didn't say then. I said them. Yeah. And I got all worried about right. that. <laughs> but there are also crowds that, I mean, I've always said that I wouldn't want to perform for an audience of me. Because totally. cause I'm not like, I'll, can, I could love a comic and I'll be stone-faced. Of course. And That's the other thing Val says. And she goes, Pete. Get her in here. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> let's get her and Burr in here. She goes, they're tired. Sometimes it's like 50 minutes into the set. And I'm like, ah, that bit didn't do that well. And there's like, they're tired. They're getting worn out. I've also done shows overseas where you're like, the whole time you're like, I don't know if they like me. I don't know it's gonna... And then you go, thank you. You're not, bravo. <laughs> like, yeah. Different they just crowds. take it in differently. There's a cultural thing too. Yeah. I, I, I was just talking to somebody about that. I forget which country it was, but they were like, they'll just sit and politely listen because they think it's like rude to interrupt. Right, right. Like they just, like, just like they like it. But you should book a tour of uh, Europe. 
I, I think when my daughter is a little bit older, because then she can come and enjoy yeah. it. How old is she? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know her name? <laughs> you can look it up later. I'll text her. <laughs> She's in my phone as daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Val and I just got home from a big day at the beach with our daughter. We went out for dinner, we were on the move, and when we got home, we were feeling miserable <laughs> because we were completely dehydrated. And in the old days, I would have just drank some water, but now I know if I want to jumpstart my system and flood every cell in my body with everything it needs for optimum hydration to avoid cramps and headaches and brain fog and just feel like myself again and feel like that life force flooding back into me that can come with perfect hydration, I drink Element. L-M-N-T, Element. It's absolutely wonderful. Their new sparkling cans are a game changer. I just, this is not a, a lie, I just use my own promo code to order the Black Lime Cherry uh, cans, which are unbelievable. You see us drinking them on the set here on the show because healthy hydration isn't just about drinking water, it's about drinking water and electrolytes. Back in the 90s, that meant you would drink like a soda, basically, like a flat soda that had like 30, 40 grams of sugar in it and it had a little bit of electrolytes, maybe. That's not what we're doing. It's 2024 and Element is here to save the day. It is sugar-free, there is no junk. It is just uh, sodium, magnesium, and potassium in the perfect ratio to, like I said, flood your system with everything it needs to feel fantastic. I love watermelon salt. That's my favorite flavor, except in the cans where they make the black cherry lime, which is my favorite in the cans. You gotta give it a try. Hydration means getting all of that stuff that you're sweating out back into you. Magnesium for health, performance, energy, potassium, sodium. You get it in you, you feel fantastic. And if you use our promo code, you will get a free uh, sample pack of every flavor that they have. You get to try the mango chili, you get to try the citrus salt, you get to try watermelon salt, you get to try the chocolate salt, which who knew is incredible hot. I drink it at the end of the day. And pro tip, for some reason I always get up less to pee. I don't get up to pee if I have an element before bed. I'm not exactly sure what the science is there, but I swear by it. So get great taste, get healthy hydration, fuel your body, fuel your brain, get rid of that fatigue. It's wonderful in the morning to jumpstart your day and get your brain up and running. Go to drinklmnt.com slash weird and use promo code weird at checkout, just like I just did, to get a free element sample pack with any order when you order. That's like a $14 value. You get it free, all of the flavors, and they're so fun to try. And if Element doesn't exceed your expectations, they have a no questions asked refund policy. You don't even have to send it back. So support your body, support the show. Go to drinklmnt.com slash weird and get your free sample pack with any purchase. That's drinklmnt.com slash weird. This episode is brought to us by our newest Pete's Pick. I'm very excited about Mud Water. They sent me their original starter kit and I found it delightful from top to bottom. I'm talking about the making it, the taste of it, and most of all, the feel of it. Mud Water is an amazing organic gluten-free and vegan coffee alternative that is so chock full of goodness, it's no wonder it makes you feel amazing. My energy is up and my sleep is improved now that I'm getting more natural energy and less coffee. As you know, of course, on the show, we are obsessed with new and natural ways to boost energy, overall well-being and mental clarity and mushrooms. And I'm very sensitive to caffeine and I've been looking for a way to drink less coffee and feel less jittery and anxious throughout the day without compromising energy and focus. Enter Mud Water, the super functional coffee alternative. For, for you, like me, coffee has just started to feel like overkill, like starting your day, like licking a car battery out of desperation. You need Mud Water to get your energy fix without your heart, you know, doing jazz hands every morning. And let's be honest, most afternoons as well. Powered by functional mushrooms and superfoods to boost your energy, focus, and your immune system, each ingredient in mud water serves a purpose for a clean, natural boost. Their OG blend contains cacao and chai for a hint of caffeine and a hot chocolate-like flavor, lion's mane mushrooms for focus, cordyceps to promote natural energy, and both shaga and reishi to support a healthy immune system. So much in one thing. Mud water is like coffee's chill, 
old yoga loving cousin that went on a spiritual retreat and came back more zen and without any of the jitters. So imagine being alert and calm at the same time while not also not having any trouble falling asleep at night. Packed with adaptogens, antioxidants, and other fancy words that make you feel superior to your coffee drinking friends. So give mud, wa- give mud water a shot and save big because our listeners get up to 43% That's right, 43% off your entire order, free shipping, and a free rechargeable frother with our exclusive link. Head to mudwtr.com forward slash weird. For a limited time, our listeners get up to 43% off your entire order, free shipping, and a free rechargeable frother. When you use our link, mudwater, mudwtr.com slash weird, grab that starter kit. That's up to 43% off your order at mudwtr.com forward slash weird. After you purchase, when they ask where you heard about them, please support our show and tell them we sent you. Stay energized and refreshed all summer long with mud water because life's too short for anything less than natural, delicious energy. I've known Todd, single Todd, and I've known relationship Todd. Yeah. And I remember being really happy for relationship Todd because you always seemed yeah like brighter again you're not curmudgeonly but when I would see you in a relationship you would often be kind of like yeah, almost giddy because I couldn't believe it that's because <laughs> like, uh, it I, was so I, sweet yeah I mean I, I was Are you in dating one, someone now? I was in a two-year relationship t- up till September I don't know how many months ago that was but it was pretty intense that's six months ago yeah. I think. Am I allowed to still be talking about it? Yes, of course. Yeah, six they months, say twice long. the length of the relationship oh, is really? how long it takes. <laughs> so I'm going to be dead before I can. <laughs> I can. Now that I'm dead, anyone, ladies, you interested? No, you can, uh, believe me, people are out there dating before they fully yeah, recovered yeah. from a thing. Right, and then they just talk about their ex the whole time. They can't stop. On the first day. You know, like, so you were in a serious thing? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, it was really intense. And were they a fan of yours? Well, who isn't, Pete? Um, the, even that sleeping dog right over there. Is the oh, Scout perked up when you uh, walked in. Um, I'm just wondering I met how her you at met. A, yeah, she was a fan. She Apparently, I'd hung out with her 20 years prior, her and her boyfriend at a show in Seattle, after a show in Seattle. Okay. Probably at Giggles or something. Uh-huh. And then she came to my... She came to one of the cellar's auxiliary rooms. I don't know if they call it auxiliary rooms. But oh, yeah. The Fat, Fat Black, Black Pussycat Bar and... She was with her brother, and she came. She came up and asked for a picture, and I didn't know that was her brother. And he, she goes, "She has a crush on you." And then you thought it was like a swinger. Then four hundred arguments later, you broke up. We broke up. Yeah. Well, is that? Yeah. This is um. The spirit of this is we could take anything out. I'm just curious what tends to go wrong in the spirit of helpfulness. Um. Like, what is your relationship? I mean, I'm no, I'm no perfect. I'm not perfect, but I am perfect in some ways. <laughs> uh, but where does it get rocky for you? Is it commitment? No, 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 no. no. Is it I'm, cohabitation? I'm, no, it's it's like, uh, for me, I don't want to get too into like the specifics of this relationship. Sure. But, but it's just arguments and not just not getting along and then kind of like you know as the as the months have passed i'm like oh that that that's probably when i should have gotten out was when that thing happened oh really like yeah. looking back yeah and you're like oh i cuz i tend to i mean she, she was i totally she was an amazing super smart beautiful creative woman I mean, she's not alive. She's alive still, so. <laughs> she still is. But, uh, you know, it just, we, I mean, in the, I'm giving you the most uh, bullet pointy kind of. No, I know, because you want to protect this person. Yeah, it's yeah. not your story to tell. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. But, but my, you like my being side a- is, <laughs> I, I was thrilled to be her, to have her, as to be her boyfriend. And, yeah. Because it's just like, well, that's what I remember. Because she's smart and she was fucking. You could, relationship Todd always seemed like a bit, like. You seem like a happy person in relationship. Yeah. Now it's just me and a cat. What is a fight? What is something you'll dig your heels in? Do you have any examples of something that you are like, why did I die on that hill? Oh, no, it's, it's in, I mean, I, it's not, I mean, in this case, it's, I would probably say that I wasn't always in the wrong 
You weren't always fights in the that rock. I didn't start. Is what I'm saying. I see. But yeah, I, yeah. It's. I feel like this is. Uh, this is close to the bone. Yeah, it's getting to like this is something. If we were at, at lunch, I would tell you everything. Let's pull it up. We're gonna pull. It, <laughs> we're gonna pull the nose order, of the plane. Order, order in and out. Let's do this. It's all good. But I can mean, I answer you this general question? Yeah. Sorry. What were we gonna say? No, I mean I do have. I definitely get anxiety. I get very anxious when I like someone. Mm. And I get very like it's a lot of like, should I? Can, when can I text her back? Should I, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Like, overthinking, overthinking, and just yeah, overthinking, mm. but just not being just. This is so fucking important to me that I gotta f- make sure I don't fuck this up. Well, that's what's so sweet about it. That's yeah. kind of I was trying to pay you a compliment because I think it's a beautiful thing to be someone who kind of blooms in a relationship yeah. and comes to life in that way. Not that you're not bloomed and to life here, yeah. but I, I remember being happy in that way. And you, you kind of overthink it and get a little bit. Yeah, especially at the beginning where you're like, oh, you're just going, because you meet someone who you're like, think you're special and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. This is not just something I should take for granted. Yeah. And then you ruin it. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> then you text them 25 times in, two, in a day and you're like. Well, then do you, do the floodgates open and you, and is the other side of the, I don't want to text too much texting too much. Um, I mean, I definitely have in the past, but I'm pretty good about, I mean, I always feel good when I, you know, I don't want to be game playing be like, yeah, you just uh, want to be real. Oh, sorry. I haven't talked to you in six months. I didn't realize, you know, yeah. Yeah. but I like, yeah. To, yeah, I just want to be like, you wrote to me. I wrote back to you. I wrote to you. You write back to me. That kind of just pretty straight up. Yeah. But no thumbs up emojis. But there are times where like uh where I'm like, should I text again? And then I wait and then they text and you're like, Oh yeah. I'm so glad I waited. I relate. Yeah. I relate. But it's all anxious about attached, they call that. Yeah. I think. Oh I definitely yeah. Anxious attached. Anxious, anxious attached. Yeah. And we end up with avoidant attachment people. Yeah, that's where it gets chunky funky. Yeah, but they often those two from They like each other yeah. at first. Yeah. yeah. I forgot why, but I know that people say opposites attract, but anxious attached and anxious avoidant. I think we often want what we're not, you know, it's exciting. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a game, a little bit of a challenge, Mm -hmm. kind of fun. I was, my general question, which ties to relationships is just like, how do you feel in the world? Like, are you, Oh oh, fuck. How does Todd, you wake up and you're going around are, 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 is the pilot light of your anxiety lit? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, now that I've, I mean, I guess I shouldn't announce that I'm 60, but I already did, and I did have a birthday party that <laughs> I posted close pictures. Birthdays. I'm March 30. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. close. See, I can't believe I'm 15 years older than you. Honestly, dude, I uh, couldn't either when I saw it when I was researching you. I mean, I don't feel like a 60-year-old, but I, I think it's just when you get 60, and it just, you start going, oh, okay, we're, this party's almost over. <laughs> I mean, I don't be it's morbid. It's Dan Natterman joke. What's that? We're in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't go well. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, <laughs> the it game ends. Thing. Yeah. You just, because also, even like career-wise, you don't want to be like, you're like, am I allowed to, am I allowed to make a short film at age 60? Or like, because yeah. when you're 25, 30, you're just like, I can do anything. Try it. Doesn't work out. I'll try something else, you know. Yeah. When you're 60, you feel like, well, I've been chosen to be a stand-up comic who tours, and this is what I do. and Yeah. And but I, isn't there a piece to that? I yeah, yeah. I mean, there is. I try to, well, yeah, I, there should be a piece to that. No, I hear that. I, we're actually not talking about the piece. We're talking about the other side of it. And I shouldn't steer us away from that, even if it's a little bit well, oh. heavy. Yeah, I mean, I do have a piece when I when I remind myself I have a piece. Like, yeah. even just like, I don't know, often, and I try to do this more, is just think about when I'm doing a show, like, oh, there's people like, hey, you want to go see Todd Berry? Yeah. Let's get a babysitter. Like, let's buy these tickets. I'm excited. We're going. And well, this is gratitude. This is ADD too. It's yeah. like I feel like I have four slots. You know how a computer has RAM. That yeah. you want, the programs you use the most. We have to load those into the RAM. Uh huh. Now that's what RAM is. If you didn't know, but uh, I have four slots, and we have to make sure one of the slots is loaded with gratitude, like conscious, thoughtful gratitude. Yeah, yeah. Because when I'm backstage and I'm like these people, that crowd was dumb or like fucking, they were too drunk or whatever. You have to, I have to, I'm not giving you advice. I'm saying mm-hmm. what I do is what you do. These people were like, they looked for parking. 
They look right. for parking. They, they got money. babysitters. Yeah. Once you have kids, you realize if people with kids came to saw you, that yeah. was a thing. Yeah. A big thing. And like, do it and be happy you know, that they, they did Maybe it. they drove two hours or something. Yeah, of course. <coughs> it's crazy. You got to hold on to that. Yeah, I do try to hold on to it. And I try to, you know, like I just did the Tonight Show and it went well. And I was yeah, like, I watched it. And I was kind of like, I, you know, feeling bad about great. something the other, you know, afterwards. Like, why don't you just take a breath and go, hey, this cool thing happened. But it doesn't, but also the remote romanticizes, like it doesn't cure everything. Like you still, right? you know, like, I'm, I'm sure, have you ever complained about a hotel room or moved to a hotel room? You're like, like it's, I'm getting this free hotel room and I'm like, this is not, why'd you put me near the construction site or something? Well, there's Which always... Which is a reasonable request, actually. Reasonable yeah. complaint, actually. Well, Byron Katie, a, a spiritual teacher that I love very much, she calls it the thought that kicks you out of heaven. She's not a religious spiritual teacher. That's for you. That's well, a little matcha. It's really? matcha nootropics and adaptogens. It makes you feel calm, is but there also any, focused. Is there CDB or anything? No. Nope. Okay. You'll like it. Shake it up. All right. Uh, magic mind. Uh, she says the thought that kicks you out of heaven is you're in a hammock, and you're like, I wish I had a cup of coffee. And she's right. And I, I would say that it's one of my obsessions is to be like, try to be dead to the past, just let it go, mm -hmm. be fully present, be grateful, and just kind of sink into a non-circumstantial happiness. In fact, I don't know if you're spiritual. In fact, let's talk about it. Uh, but probably I, not. <laughs> I would say spirituality is, at its core, about finding a non-circumstantial Maybe I'll say peace, but I think you could also say happiness. And you usually come to these things after you realize, boy, I've done all these different relationships, friendships. I went whitewater rafting or this or this. I did Conan. I did The Tonight Show. And there's still always going to be something a little bit off. So it's about retreating in inward. Uh -huh. I'm sure you've heard that before. Probably, yeah. Where, where are you at with that? I don't want to hear myself talk about it. Um, God? I, I'm just sort of... A... So I feel like a dum dum, but uh, no, no, I'm no, you're clearly not safe place. Looking at the dog right now, <laughs> <laughs> running laps around this dog. Um, I just don't think about that stuff a lot, and I'm not religious. I'm not, I'm not a new atheist or anything, or one of these. I'm not an avid atheist. Yeah, I'm just kind of a religious and also a spiritual. But I'm open to hearing about. I still, I don't even understand what when people say they're spiritual. But, yeah. Because I shut down immediately. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I want to work on, I'm working on, a, I have a new God joke and I'm working on a part before it where I go, it's hard to do jokes about God. The people who don't believe in God think you're talking about a unicorn. The people who do believe in God are worried, are actively anxious that you're going to misrepresent their unicorn. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a really dumb topic to talk about. Because I saw this atheist, I think this was Christopher Hitchens and this on other atheist on debating uh i guess a religious person they're like well you're i just believe in one less god than you do there's three thousand gods and you right. don't believe in 2999 of them right but you believe this one and i don't believe in that one so that right. we're not that far off that's actually I, I think that's really sweet i have i am a spiritual person but i have a lot more i'd rather talk to an atheist i'm not the only spiritual person i know that feels this way the, you get in trouble when you're talking to someone who is really religious and they have like their stuff. Yeah. There's no getting in there. There's no, t there's no conversation there. Mm -hmm. I say that as someone who used to be that way, meaning as an atheist, I've had 700 on this show and you can always find some right. area. The, the issue I would take with the 2,999 argument is that's not actually, we're not actually talking about God. You can't talk about God directly. You can only talk about these metaphors, these symbols. Mm -hmm. So you're saying like, there's 3,000 metaphors, but there's only one thing. God is just a word for an origin. <laughs> Don't glaze over it. That's one point I'm going to make for you. God is a fancy word <laughs> for the irreducible starting point of reality. Okay. Do you meditate? I do. I'm slightly shifting to something I can talk no, about. No, please do, because there's, there's more people like you than there are like me. So um, You'll help the show. I help the show. You'll help the show steering it towards you. Okay. No, I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't cutting you down, but it's just no, something no, no. that's related. I didn't think I you think. were. Do you meditate? I've tried, and I kind of want to try again. Like I was surprised Seinfeld. He just doesn't seem like the type. He, he's seriously, and he like I think at least yeah twenty minutes a day, twice a day. Like yeah. 
to me, that seems like an ADHD nightmare. But maybe it helps everything. Well, ideally, and I'm with you, it certainly can be yeah. an ADHD nightmare. Ideally, it'll feel like hanging up the hat of your mind just for a moment. That's what the whole thing is, is sort of circumventing it. It's not getting your mind to meditate. It's just giving your mind the 20 minutes off. I just wish, like, I'm open to meditating because I probably help with my blood pressure and things like that and stress. Mm, mm. But I, I haven't, no one's convinced me. To do it. Because I've tried it a few times. I got that Calm app and I yeah. paid for the premium version of it. And <laughs> nice. I took that out to the audience. And, uh, <laughs> But it's, you know, they say, because my mind will always want to go, yeah, that's part of it. Then, uh, okay, if that's part of it, then what, what am I getting out of this? Well, look, I'm not a meditation teacher, but uh, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I truly, I'm open to it. I'm not like slamming it. I'm... The strange thing is, is you're building a <coughs> new neural groove, right? You're trying to make a new habit. And the habit is when you notice that you're thinking to just compassionately kind of let it keep flowing like a... The common image is like a leaf on a river. Like there's the thought, this isn't working. Just kind of let it go. It's going to happen. Notice and then go back to your breath. Yeah, that's what, they, that's what they say, right? And then even the, the best thing I've heard about meditation is there are no bad sits. They call it a sit. There's no bad sit. Oh, I was thinking the whole time. You're still working that relationship with yourself where uh -huh. you're like practicing essentially forgiving reality. You're having these thoughts, you're having this discomfort, right? and you're just practicing this, uh, you're almost like being slippery with it. It's like, and there that goes, and there that goes. You're talking about being 60, and it's like, what were you worried about when you were 42? Like, Probably the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I mean, I, yeah. And what if it happens? What do you, what? I laughed because it's, it's true, but what, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I'm sure I, I, I'm sure I wasn't like super calm when I was 30 no, and that's, now, I'm, yeah. now I'm anxious. Oh, no, I wasn't saying, I'm yeah. saying when you were 42, you were worried. My yeah. point is you can't remember. Right, right. I was worried this morning about an email and I was like, how many emails have I gotten and replied to? Was, None of them mattered. What was this email about? It was just about a video I made and it was some notes. Oh, <laughs> notes. Okay. And I was just, it wasn't but like it wasn't even, email or anything. No, no, no. Oh, no, it wasn't. There was no, re that's my point. I think I've had to come to terms with the fact that there's a part of my brain that wants to be anxious, that likes it. You know when people are in like bad relationships and you're like, shut up, you fucking love it. All the drama and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. You like it. I'm talking to my mom right now. You like it. <laughs> For me, it's anxiety. And I've just had to go like, what do we always say is that's where it pools. You know when you see mercury, like blobs of mercury, uh -huh. and they just start collecting and pooling? My anxiety just wants something in its seat. And it'll take an email or it'll take like, yeah, before yeah. the email was another email. It's usually an email. Fuck you, email. Do you ruminate a lot? I will ruminate and I have to catch myself. Yeah. The reason I say I have to catch myself is I'm like, it is getting better. The things that I'm interested in help. And some of it is just very somatic, meaning embodied, like it's breathing. Mm -hmm. It's putting a hand on my chest, it's just slowing down. Yeah. Maybe not looking at your phone. Maybe don't look at the email until a certain time in the day. And some of it is... More spiritual, more conceptual, more meditative, that sort of stuff to like, let's step away from it. The other one that, that's interesting is going towards it. That's the, the counterintuitive one. Oh, You're, diving into the stress? The feeling. Yeah. Getting so close to it. Rupert Spira calls it kissing the toad. You know the story, you kiss the toad, it turns into a, into a prince. Mm -hmm. So there's a repulsive thing, the toad. Yeah. Go so close to it. Don't just get close to it, kiss it. And he would say, let's put the toad aside because it's not a toad anymore. You don't just get close to the feeling, you eat it, you consume it. Because you have to, to look at your anxiety, or your stress, or your fear, or whatever, you have to be subject to object. But if you get so close to the feeling, just experience it for what it is, it's an intense energy. Yeah, I, I do think like owning things is, is important. If just like, like even just like my fear of lightning, like I'll, t I'll tell everyone I'm fucking afraid of lightning. Yeah. I mean, also, you know, I don't know if that's really parallel to what you're talking about. No, but, it is. But it's just like, keep yeah, the lights you, on. You, yeah. I am absolutely afraid of it. Now, now what do you got? Yeah. Uh, but that's the whole art of stand-up, too. Not that people are too. bullying me because I'm a, No, but I, I, I still meet people, you know, grown people. 
that seem ashamed of their weird thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, boy, you and I as comedians have gotten a crash course in right. say it. And like you're talking about earlier about meeting people after a show and sometimes they're like, oh, sorry. Like I've had that where they're like, oh man, I'm really awkward. I don't like it. Just like, it's okay. Yeah. Everyone join the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a great Drew Carey joke where he goes, you don't like, it just made me think of it. You don't like your job? There's a club for that. It's called everyone. They meet at the bar. <laughs> Isn't that's that a great joke? That's a really good joke. That's a really good joke. That's, you could do that joke. I'm going to steal that one. It's a clean joke, that's what I mean. <laughs> Have you ever seen a ghost? A ghost? You seem like a guy who's seen a ghost. No, this is kind of funny, though. Maybe it's not funny, but the other day I was staying at my friend's house. He's got a nice house on Los Feliz. And I'm someone who, anytime I stay in a hotel, or especially if I'm in a house alone, I just assume I hear someone breaking in. <laughs> I always hear people, like every hotel room, I hear like a click, like, what the fuck's that? <laughs> this this time I was in the bathroom and I hear a click and like oh, it sounds like someone breaking in and then I was like Todd I gave myself my little Todd you, you do this every time yeah and then there was a fucking dude in the hallway he was like house sitting and misunderstood he was he, yeah yeah he 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 was in the hallway and I'm like half naked and and I'm like, who are you? And then he goes, I'm house sitting. Like, he looked terrified, so you knew he wasn't going to... Yeah. Like, he wasn't about to kill That's me. That's what separates us from the burglars, is they're very confident. But, yeah. <laughs> but, and then he just... Uh, I guess that's not really a ghost, but it was a thing. Yeah, no, a scary thing. And then he, like, showed me the email, like, oh, okay. And it was, like, clearly just a misunderstanding. And I yeah. was like, okay. But it was fucking terrifying. Yeah. But I was pretty calm, though. Like, man, I was pretty calm. Considering... Last time I was in Montreal... Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. You're like Leo in uh, The Departed. My hand's steady. You I've stay never calm. watched that movie either. Wow, well, a lot of great movies one, right? you haven't seen. I've never seen a movie. No, I... The Departed is great. You have to forgive a couple okay. couple, couple things. Yeah. But you'll love it. Have you ever almost died? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I've... No riptides? I had a... Uh, <laughs> it's always a riptide. I had a, a doctor appointment not too long ago where he's like, did you take... I told him what medicine I took. He was, oh, you took this one? And you took that one? I go, yeah. Because he never fucking told me not to. And my blood pressure dropped to almost dangerous level. Whoa. And he's like, oh, you know, that could kill you. Well, you're the one who could, you're the one who didn't tell Also, me. the pharmacist needs to tell you yeah, that too. There yeah, were I mean, two people yeah. that should have told you that. I mean, I should do my own research. But, so, I mean, should I you? can't say I did. I almost, there's times where you almost get hit by a car. I was going to so, say in New York. But I, I can't say I've never, I've never been like, you know, on life support or anything. What's your vice? My vice? Oh, so I should have a funny answer for that. Black the tar heroin. Vice. <laughs> <laughs> Just black tar heroin. No big deal. Uh, I don't. I Are mean, you a I, big boozer? I'm not a big boozer. I drink a little bit, maybe one or two drinks a week. Oh, really? Yeah. Jesus. Is that a lot? No. Okay. Killing it. Good yeah. For I, you. I mean, I used to drink more, weirdly. And I like, used to have like a couple a night when I, it also was the time when, because I kept a, I had like high triglycerides, so I started keeping track of my drinking. Mm. And I looked back a few years ago, and I was like, wow, I was having like two a night. Yeah. But it was also, that was the time where they said, two glasses of wine a night is good for you. Right. And now, of course, they're like, oh, no, that's not, you should probably not have any. Do you want to hear my Larry David thing on that? Yeah. It's just a Larry David kind of attitude. Yeah. They're always like, wine is good for you, antioxidants. And I'm like, then drink grape juice. Right. Why are we bringing fermentation Right. Into this, it's not kimchi. It's not the good <laughs> fermentation. You're yeah. just drinking poison. Yeah. You're, your body's having a poison response. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's good for you. The lobbyists, man, like the the funding behind these studies, it's insane. Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, and they just change, and they're always very confident. Yeah, and like even like you go on TikTok, you see people like a doctor say something, then another doctor jumps into the shot. Yeah, and he refutes it, and you're like, oh, that actually seems to make more sense. But they're both doctors. I think. I, I think this is what happens. Again, I'm going to say people our age, even if there's 15 years between us. I feel like we've both been around enough where you're just like, yeah, it's the egg. A good egg, bad egg, high cholesterol, low. You yeah. know what I mean? Like things just change. And there's yeah, a think, freedom to go in. Like, we, don't, we don't know. Just maybe right. eat intuitively. I don't know. Yeah, I think there is a thing of like, yeah, if I if I had five drinks a night or three drinks a night or what I used to have, two drinks a night, that'd be not smart. It's funny, you saying two drinks a night when I was a drinker, I watched a doc on uh, doc on Netflix where they were like, 
all about alcohol. And I was like, I'm going to watch this and learn if I have a problem. And they were like, I'm a big drinker. I love a drink. I have two drinks every other night. And I was like, hmm? (laughs) I was at home with a bottle of Jack. Like, the fuck is I? Like, two drinks a night was like my goal. That was like yeah, my ambition yeah. was two drinks a night. That's when I was excited that I didn't, I knew I wasn't, at least now I was drinking too much, but it wasn't an alcoholic. Cause like, cause it didn't I just, grab you. I just slower, I slowed down yeah. successfully. You didn't have the allergy. Yeah, yeah. Which is great. It. Yeah. Are you more of a food guy? I I can't say I eat well. I can't say, I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if not exercising is a vice, but. Yeah, sure. I, it's, I don't, ex- I mean, I. And it's clearly not movies. Like what is Todd Berry fucking love? <laughs> oh, you consider going to the movies? Now advice? I am. I'm broadening it to like, <laughs> you like your breathing. Thing. Is it breathing? drumming? No, no, no. What is your drumming. thing? It's like, Todd, it's your what birthday. Your... We're going to do oh, all your I love favorite eating. things. Okay. Every, every, here's something I love. I love going to coffee shops. Coffee shops. Like every, I'm on the, on the road. I find one. I'll sit I there for the two, three hours, two in hours. Fact, some of my fondest memories are day of a show in a coffee shop, just trying the espresso. I love it. It's, yeah, me it's, too. It's... I get excited about waking up and going to the coffee shop. Is it to enjoy the espresso like me, or is it just kind of taking the vibe? I take in the vibe, because otherwise, because I've tried the... Now it's going to get all coffee-centric. But uh, I've get fantasized about... Get security, that's you know, I've, you know, I've fantasized about, like, make my own coffee, you know? you know? Someone gave me a Chemex, as a, I got in a gift bag, and I'd never used it once, but then you re- research, like, making your own coffee. Like, you, all you need is a scale, a thermometer, like, I'm going downstairs. Well, you live in Manhattan, yeah, sir. I'll go, go walk a block and have them experts make me... It's another but, great but I love t- It's on the show. He goes, I don't have coffee in the house. I get my coffee on the outside. I love taking it in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like sitting there. and Just drinking black coffee? Yeah, black coffee. Or an iced Americano. Yeah. I um, I don't usually get an espresso. But although today, because huh? I didn't want to pee. At Brew right this, over I here. Had a, uh, I went to Maru. Maru is also very And good. I had an iced espresso. All right. Yeah. I find, look, I don't drink anymore. It's been a decade almost. Uh huh. Coffee is a, there's a reason why the addicts go to the coffee. Right. It lights you up, but there's also a kind of a whiny, meaning wine. Like I miss appreciating something. And the most appreciatable coffee drink to me is black espresso because you can really, yeah. now I don't like how I sound. But like you can see the nuance. You can go like, you have a, a mocha. You're just tasting Hershey's syrup. Like, yeah, yeah, get yeah. The fuck yeah. Out of here. yeah, I've never been like into because I also feel like coffee's an opportunity to me to enjoy something that has no calories, basically. Facts. And it's like, why am I chugging? Why am I going to chug 250 calories? I'm with you. I'm saving that for the fries I have later. Dude, I couldn't be harder with you. I don't <laughs> understand drinking calories. It's the stupidest thing yeah. in the world. It's not that good. I did a show at a zero proof bar the other night. What's a zero proof bar? It's all mocktails. Oh. It's um I would love that. Yeah, the show was great. It was at a place called Stay in Chinatown in New in LA. Todd, in ten years, I think we're gonna have a whole different culture. I I, I already see it happening. I don't want to get all anti alcohol. I just see a shift happening. I wanna see there's definitely a shift. There's a shift. Yeah, because I think you see mocktails on every on a lot of menus now, like and they'll have like five or six. It's of them. the new veganism. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you see veggie. I wanna options. see that with smoking, man. What's that? I want to see smoking just go way down. Cigarettes? Yeah. I think that's because you live in Manhattan. No, I want I want people to stop smoking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think people... Okay, then let me say it this way. I think it's because I live in California. I, they I, don't smoke here? If you see someone smoking, it's like spotting a, really? a Yeti or something. Wouldn't you say, Katie? Yes, yeah, weird. Unless you're in front of Ye Rustic Inn at 2 a.m., you don't see people You don't see smoking. like hipsters smoking outside? Not too much. Really? No. Maybe vaping. Well, was, was, Maybe what? vaping. Kyle Kinane was just here. He he quit. Good. All the all the yeah smoking's, but I think the way we feel about smoking, I think we're gonna feel that way about drinking in the future because we're yeah, just definitely. seeing Generation uh, Z and uh, certainly in the next generation. I think they're just gonna be like, why was Dad having thirty beers? Right. And you said the show at the mocktail place was great. Yeah, it was great. No fucking shit. Right. Exactly. Have your wits about you. Like there's always that thing like. I've had people, I don't know if you've had people say like, oh, you like them when they're a little drunk? No, I'd prefer that they were stone cold. So, me too. I mean, maybe it helps if someone has a glass of drinker, but anything maybe, bad that's going to happen. Maybe one. Yeah. Anything bad is going to be that. It's probably going to be alcohol tied to that. Well, dude, when you bring into the equation 
how many uh, people die, how many murders are alcohol fueled, how many obviously car accidents yeah. are alcohol fueled. It's just like a, it's a cultural blind spot. Right. And when, when I'm in a time capsule and they rebuild my personality with AI, I wanna be on the record in 2024. We saw it coming, this is fucking madness. I mean, also just the, the like the potheads, even though I don't like to agree with potheads, they were always right about the alcohol is worse thing. Yeah, that's right. And the, there's just still so many weird blue laws, you know, like I remember Trader Joe's in, on 14th Street in, in New York had, a, had to have a separate wine shop. Yeah, that's right. Next to it. Two buck chuck. Yeah, but they couldn't, that, that was a legal thing. They couldn't just yeah, mix them. that's right. And it's like, you know, there's places where you can, you can't get, you get booze in little bottles and like, right. I went to Scotland and... They have a line on the wine glass that they fill up, so you do a precise. They're pour. very precise about that. But then that. the biggest drunks I've ever seen in my life. Right. So right. it's and it's just like no, it's all sin laws. Drunk driving. Fuck. Shame. Yeah. I have zero. I fantasize about a friend of mine calling me up and saying, "Hey, I'm in jail for drunk driving." Okay. Hope you get out soon. Click. <laughs> You just reminded me. I mean, I don't want them to be driving drunk, but you know. No, no, to 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 rub their nose in it a little bit. I get it. I don't get me started on comedians that have closers about how it's okay to drink and drive. I yeah. think that's that's literally could be causing death. What? I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I just I don't. It's like I remember there was a, I went to college in Gainesville and there was a bar that was by the mall and they had like three for one on Wednesdays. Like no one's. Taking public transportation in Gainesville to the mall. Right, right. And three for one, you're going to have three. <laughs> I remember you, being with somebody, not in my family, but somebody else's family with their family. Guys having three Long Island iced teas while we're bowling. And I'm like, and you're going to drive. I There was a kid, and I just took the, he's driving with us. You fuck off. Like, if I was a bigger man or a bigger, if I had more courage, let's not yeah. say a bigger man. If I had more courage, I would have been like, you fucking can't. But there was a whole power dynamic. It's hard. I've tried to, you know, I've been in situations it's where it's really ugly. Where you're like, what am I going to call the cops? On yeah, the, uh, I but, know. I know. But, but yeah, maybe the answer is yes. Yeah, the maybe answer I should, yes. yeah. On the record, I sh we absolutely should have. Ah, oh, God, we're in a tricky, tricky spot. But it's true. A little vulnerability never hurt anybody. What do you mean tricky spot? Just talking about it. Somebody probably listening is like, yeah, you should fucking take the key. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. The, I'm saying you're right. But if I told you the details, which I can't without outing a person, right, right. it was like a situation. Yeah, there are times where you're just like, are you sure? Yeah, I'm all right to drive. And like, I don't know how far. I mean, yeah, I've, I've insisted on people, I think, not I driving know. or talk them out of it. or Yeah. But it's a tricky pickle. Where was I? I had something. Oh, the best Todd Berry joke of all time. Do you want to know which one it is? Oh, there's, if, you can, if you could just reduce it to one, let's see. <laughs> yeah, what was that? I really think... One of your contributions to, I'll just say for me, how can I know anyone else's experience? Yeah. But my life has been improved exponentially from the joke. You know, when you don't want to do something with somebody and then they cancel. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest jokes. And uh, you go, what? well, it's okay. I'm going to be too busy doing cartwheels. Or you're dancing in the street, yeah. <laughs> it's from my 2012 special, Super Crazy, available on Amazon Prime. It's a fan, it's, a, it's one of those jokes that, you needed, you know what I mean? Yeah. You needed, like, I wanted someone to address that feeling. Yeah. When you have something you're dreading and then they cancel is one of the best feelings in the world. In yeah. the world. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm an introvert. I, are you introverted? I was, you know, it's, it's interesting. I asked someone the other day if I am, because I was at, oh, I was at, I went on, stood online for bagels with that this place that everyone's losing their mind over. Here in town? Yeah, called, well, I'm not going to, it doesn't matter. It's a good bagel place. No, without this, we won't mention well, yeah, it. Yeah, no free rides. No free rides. You send bagels or bust. Um, but it was like literally a two-hour experience. Like, Whoa. But we were talking to some people just in line, and at some point I was like, and then we sat down with them, and then it's like, at some point I was like, very nice people. But at some point I was like, I can't. I gotta go. I gotta. I'm freaking out. Yeah. So I don't know if that makes me an introvert I've or just it. makes me react to someone I don't want to talk to anymore. Yeah, maybe it was them. Yeah, I mean they didn't do anything wrong, and they were. I think it goes back to your Todd question. On your favorite day, we're gonna go to a coffee shop. Me, I can't do a loud dinner. I need to know where I'm at. 
it's like turning the lights up at a show. I mm -hmm. need to, it needs to be quiet enough that I can hear yeah. people. How do you feel about music at restaurants? Fucking turn it down. Oh my God. If I, if I know it's your playlist, eat shit. Yeah. Fucking Mario Batali's Beatles mix. Yeah. I mean, Fuck well, you. at least that would be the Beatles. Sometimes it's just like, oh, oh is this a dance club? That's yeah, sort of yeah, food? Yeah. And how do you feel about being, it's a very Manhattan thing, but you're sat too close to the people next to you and it's just like... Well, that that doesn't really bother me. It's because you've lived in Manhattan for three decades. I mean, <laughs> I do, eating out is one of my big things. I love I love yeah, going yeah. to restaurants. I love yeah. reading about restaurants. I love talking about... You ever do this podcast called uh, Off Menu? Bleep that. <laughs> we only talk, this is the only podcast. Okay. I'm just kidding. No, off menu, I haven't, no. It's this guy's uh, James A. Caster who, and okay, yeah, Ed Gamble, and you just talk about your dream meal, like ah. you know, what appetizer, then they all talk about it, ah. uh, side dish. And it's really, I like that. Yeah, it's like, oh, man. I used to have a bit where I asked somebody what their last meal would be, and they said, just a nice little cut of steak and some, uh, what did they say? Well, I want to get it right. And it was like, and some mashed potatoes. I, I did this whole, it never worked, uh -huh. but I was like, oh yeah, we'll just swing by any nursing home and pick <laughs> oh, that up. God. Like I it was just like the most bland, <laughs> boring, because mine was Roscoe's chicken. I want hot wings. Yeah. I want like fucking, I want to get high off of it. Yeah. I'm about to die. You're going to eat a, like the basic bitch menu at a wedding, <laughs> like a little cut. I was like this. Yeah, like chicken fingers with some honey mustard sauce. Yeah. Airport that. chicken fingers with honey mustard sounds, and ranch. That sounds great actually. Yeah. We're hungry. Uh -huh. I'm pretty hungry. This has been uh, this has been wonderful. I, do you feel good? Yeah, this is good. I, I'm glad I, got, I did this. Do you have a Mitch Hedberg story because you shot a pilot with him? I, I, I just uh, I, I do have one that I uh, yeah. I, this is pretty funny. I once flew to him. To, I think we flew to Arizona to do a gig, and I had status with I think it was Continental Airlines. Oh wow! Where you could. You bet on the wrong horse. You could horse. upgrade. <laughs> you could upgrade. Well, they turned into uh, oh, it transferred. United. That's United now. Oh, that's how it parted my million miles. But <laughs> I had like a certain level where like you can upgrade yourself and a friend, a traveling wow. man. And so I, we went to the gate, and I was like, "Can I? You think we can upgrade us?" She hands us two new boarding passes, and he sits. We sit down, and we're in first class, and he just fell asleep the whole time, and like he didn't. He didn't mention he didn't it. And then when wait, he, wait, wait, no, he didn't mention it? And then he woke up, he goes, thanks. <laughs> it's like, all right, yeah, I mean, I did upgrade you to fucking first class. But I mean, he, it was, you okay. know, it was very I, Mitch. It was not, it was not rude. It was just kind of funny. It was, it, it, just so, it was just kind of like. It was guileless. It wasn't like, holy shit, thank you so much. I am lit up by this story though. Okay. I, I went to the dentist this morning and it's one, I, I love this dentist because they let you watch TV. And I watched the Big Salad episode of Seinfeld where George is mad that Elaine didn't thank him for buying her a Big Salad. Oh. First class ticket? What are you fucking nuts? I'd go full Costanza. <laughs> I mean, I didn't pay for it. It didn't cost me anything, but it was still Did like, you make it happen? I did, yeah. I did. Then it's, that's, that's his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might as well be money. Well, you know. You're, uh, you made gold blow everywhere around. <laughs> you thank the plain view. <laughs> Have you seen There Will Be Blood? I think I did. Oh, come or did I see on. No Country for Old Men? I, I get those two confused. We could talk about movies that I loved. This is upsetting. Did you see Sexy Beast? No. Oh, you should see Sexy Beast. Did you see. Have you? Sexy Beast is great. Is it new? No, nah, it's like at least 15 years old. I'd oh, say. okay. But it's Ben Kingsley. Okay. Really good. Do you okay. see Force Majeure? No. That's fucking great. Yeah. Force Majeure? Yeah, don't not the remake. I haven't seen the remake, but there's an American remake, which apparently is... Oh, it's subtitled? No, it's in Swedish, I think. So maybe... Well, actually, maybe that they would be subtitled. Yeah, they speak Swedish. Do you not do subtitles? No, I just want to know what I'm getting into. <laughs> it's a little you know low I mean? rent, huh? Well, that's... I want to know, am I, I watching want to read. This? Am I watching this on a phone? Oh, I'm I wouldn't watch... No, I wouldn't Force watch Majeure. Force either of those. How do you spell Majeure? M-A-J-M? Um, it doesn't matter. It's a real... I think you would love it. Really? Force it's majeure. It's a real interesting backdrop for a psychological kind of story. Like, All right. What's uh, your fave of all time? I don't know. Those, those two those, are, those are up there. there. I used to love that movie Diner. I, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a taste for your taste. Yeah, I like a, I don't like, I'm not, I'm not going to mention any Star trek -y or Avengers or... Yeah. But you I'm also sure just I, blurred I'm Marvel sure. and Star Trek. Bold. I mean, move, I'll happily work for you if you want to put me in one of your films. You'd be a great. Uh, I, I actually know the hero, but I'm not going to say it. Not for a dumb reason. Um, 
for this is we, we're trying to get people we're trying to grow the show so if you like this show and if you like i'm talking to the audience now oh, okay not you todd <laughs> i don't like this show clearly we've been <laughs> we've been out for over a decade and and it's just hard to grow the show and one of the ways you can grow the show is have people review it get please give us five stars on itunes uh, and we were going to read some of this. this is Neilius Maximus. He said, five stars for weirdos. Can you be a silly goose? Are you a curious critter? Do you like Bible versus bodily fluid psychedelics and non-dualism? Can you be kind to yourself? Can you also get freaky? If so, this podcast is for you. Wow, Let's get so into d- it. So well written. I really well, I wouldn't spend that. Much. That's more time than I'd spent writing my act. For- <laughs> <laughs> like, but that was just like so no. sharp. Neilius Maximus, you 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 did it. You blew me and Todd away with your wonderful. You win the prize, which is this dog right here. <laughs> you get Scout. JK Scout is uh, Katie's uh, in perpetuity. But thank you so much, Neilius. And please, uh, we'll read some more on the show. So uh, maybe we'll read yours. It means a lot for people to review it. Thank you, Todd. Thanks for having me. This We've was really fun. to have you on for. Sorry, so I didn't long. do it sooner. No, I'm so glad you did. I have no regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me with, uh, I forget what I was wondering if I should regret, but you made me feel better about it. Oh, the, the awful thing you said to the guy from Green Day? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say keep it crispy? It's how we close. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone, keep it crispy, all right? Would you say it in the voice of Todd Berry from the album Medium Energy? Keep it crispy. <laughs> <laughs> you leave me.